and good afternoon, Xbox Nation. Welcome to this week's new episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL, and it's weird. This is the first show of the week, and normally that comes the way, of course, of primetime gaming, which wasn't last night. Uh, the new show date is Wednesdays. That's happening starting this Wednesday. The crew and I will be back 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a really good show. uh, And uh, listen, can't wait to see what the, uh, you know, what the people say on the new, again, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but new date on Wednesday starting this week. And uh, hopefully you, you, you know, anyone that has followed the show before. You know, takes uh, you know takes a, a ride with us to the new uh, day, and also if if you you know if you had nothing to do on Wednesdays and you were looking for a podcast, well, surprise, here we are, mm-hmm. and uh, that actually does uh, it, it does uh, really well for me personally because I get a break where I can actually play games, which is I don't know kind of important to running four shows per week. True. Uh, so my last show Friday, twelve p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't go back to podcasting until Tuesday. So it gives me a nice big uh, weekend block to not only hang out with the missus and do, uh, you know, get our Animal Crossing on, but we also get, I get a chance to play, you know, Halo, which you're going to see. And, uh, but I hope everyone, uh, you know, tunes in. We have a great show planned for you, but you're here today. And you're here to talk about, we got a lot of topics to talk about. First of all, Joseph Staten um, is making some news. Obviously, he was a guest on kind of funny's X cast uh, last week. And he dropped, well, a couple of nuggets that classic maps could be coming back. This is something I've been calling for personally, only because I'm such a big fan of specifically halo three. And it's uh, it, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. I, I think that the, the halo infinite can live in both the past and present or, and of course the future, but let's get into the guests. First of all, we have two guests here. One is a returning guest. You know him from uh, being one of the voices of Living Split Screen each and every week, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. He's here once again. Steel Rain, my brother, how you feeling? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is I and I am he, the one and only Steel Rain. And boom, Dominus Maximus, as I have called you since you got over 10K. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you for sending that signal out again, man. And anytime that I can jump into someone who I consider to be an integral part of the community, a pillar you, of our community, uh, you know I'm there, man. Uh, nothing but love for you. You got some fire topics, and we getting ramped up into the summer, man. Again. The age of accessibility is coming closer and closer. We're going to talk about some of those things. And uh, other than that, man, got some beautiful people on the panel. I hope y'all are locked in. You got your seatbelts fastened real tight because uh, we're going for a real ride today. So appreciate you having yeah, me. Yeah, uh, well, it's great to have you on as always. Appreciate the very kind words. And uh, yeah, it's, we do have a, an incredible show for you today. And of course, making his guest appearance, his first appearance on any of the Double Barrel Gaming Channel uh, weekly shows, Ty Guy Travis, uh, you know him obviously from the BitCast, which is one of my favorite shows, and uh, obviously Ains is a very good friend of mine, but he's also a writer for IGN, and he recently had the pleasure of doing the review for Trek to Yomi, and we're going to be talking about that specific game. Travis, welcome to the program, brother. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. McClunky, happy to be here, and uh, uh, yeah, hopefully, I, I can't. I don't think I can hold a candle to uh, Steel Rain's intro, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do my best. So I, I, I think you're going to do just fine, brother. And it's great to have you on the show. Obviously, we met a, a couple of weeks ago when Ains had uh, you guys, not Ains, just you guys are part of the show, the 200th episode. Of of, of the Bitcast, which is a a well oiled machine, great topics, family uh, type of environment. Every time you come by and you hang out with Ains and the crew, and uh, listen, uh, love what you do there. Uh, really, uh, you know, obviously we're going to get into Trek to Yomi. You know, you gave it a a seven out of ten, which folks, you know, in in twenty twenty two, still a good review. I think uh, we've gotten into meta too much where we think that if it's not a 99.9% that it's that's not good and that's not in fact the case uh actually a game can be a 7 and be a fabulous game which is we're going to get into that uh but um Mav uh thankfully your arm isn't broken thankfully you are here to reprise your role in your seat how the hell are you man oh you're muted 
Oh, there I go. Rookie there mistakes. Go. I, I missed like what, what a week, and I'm already uh, <laughs> doing my intro on mute. Come on. Oh my. All goodness. right. They know. Thanks for having me again. As always, boom. I uh, love the uh, the panel you have together uh, for the show today. With uh, got Travis and my my brother Steel Rain here uh, hanging out. Um, love you got bro. Josh and BJ. We're gonna have a lot of fun. A lot of topics. And yeah, my my arm's okay. Yeah, I had a weird spill last uh, last week, but you know it's okay. Um, we've been able to maintain and and still live a normal life, so that's good to go. Um, and super, yeah, super important. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I. I uh, but yeah, man, it, we're gonna have a lot of fun. There's some interesting things to talk about. I, I saw the topic list you sent to us because you're ultra prepared and always send us more <laughs> than any other host out there in gaming podcast history uh, to to go over. So I appreciate that as always. It's gonna be a blast. I think so. I appreciate okay. it very much. And you know something? Uh, shout out to Lord Cognito. Uh, it's yes. because of his tutelage that my Ooh. show notes are not essays because they used to be epilogues. They used to be, uh, you know, 2,000 word show show notes that people would be like, you know what? Boom. I, I love you, but I kind of feel like I'm in school. So I kind of, you know, lowered the amount. I still make <laughs> that many notes for me personally because yeah. if I get if I get a date wrong, if I get someone's name wrong, I I, I kind of really want to punch myself in the face because I'm the mm -hmm. host and I just I have to be better. Um, thankfully that doesn't happen very often. But when I do get it wrong, folks, I will tell you. Yeah, I, I admit that I got it wrong. But Mr. TikTok himself, Gen sixty four, Josh, what's going <laughs> on, brother? How are you, <laughs> Mr. TikTok? I love it. I'm fantastic. So glad to be here. Uh, stoked to hang out with the panel today. Very and very and Josh, right up your alley. We have a monster Halo topic uh, that I think you're going to like. Joseph Staten really uh, chopping it up with the bit. Uh, the uh, I said the bit cast, the mm -hmm. X cast crew. See, I got it wrong, folks. There you go. Uh, can't wait to hear what you think about old maps potentially returning to Halo Infinite. I think it's. I think the writing was on the wall. I, 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 but I'm happy to 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 say that it was spoken about. Uh, you know, not in the, you know, the coffee break room, but you know, publicly right. for us to get excited about. But we'll get your opinion on that. Um, how you been, man? So good. So so good. Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> you called me Mr. TikTok. I was streaming last night. Ooh. Having an incredible stream. Got banned again. <sighs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, like, man. You got to keep those pants on, Josh. I know. You know. Rip it's away true. pants. I, I forget. <laughs> they sound sometimes. interesting, but usually cause trouble. There you go. You know, it's like I'm sitting most of the time and then I accidentally stand up. I'm like, oh, I forgot oh. pants. Yeah. Yeah, Bloody right. hell. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, no, it's just it's just a problem with the with the platform right now. It's uh, yeah, it's nice it, having a contact there that I'm like. I mean, like, I literally, I got banned at eleven thirty my time, and I think he's, I think he's, I think he's in my time zone. Literally, messaged me back at eleven thirty. I'm like, you do not have to message. I'm just letting you know for tomorrow. <laughs> like, you don't have to get a hold of me. So, um, so it's super cool. They're 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 working really hard to make it a really uh, viable platform. Uh, yeah, I mean, the banding thing. If you if you're a bad guy, then I get it. If you if you're out there just you know having fun with it, and and there really isn't anything that's you know. Any sexual in you innuendos or anything that's you know race race related, it's even politically. I'm not a you know politics doesn't have a place in gaming at least to talk about it. So right. I can uh, I hopefully that gets rectified because every time that happens, it 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 makes you wonder how the platform continues to grow if they're you know constantly banning their own people like that for for nonsense. But the the the, the other highlight for this week though is I am being spotlighted by TikTok on Thursday oh, afternoon. So if you guys want to come check out what's probably going to be my hypest stream ever, it'll <laughs> be Thursday at around 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on TikTok. So I, I will make sure to swing by and definitely help you promote that as well. But last and no way least, uh, the man that is on mute but will be with us momentarily uh, and, and probably drinking a spot of tea as we speak, VJ, uh, how are you, man? How you been? Um, I'm morning, sir. Yeah, I'm... All ship shape and Bristol fashion over here, and uh, looking I forward to the show. I love it. Well, listen. Let, in fact, let let's get into the show. We're ten minutes in. We did intros. Now you're you're here for the for the conversation. Um, and uh, one of the things that came out this week that excited me personally for a multitude of reasons is we have uh, some some talk that uh, Forza Horizon Six yes. is an early production. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that is a big deal considering that Forza Horizon 5 launched to uh, last last uh, last year at the end of the mm -hmm. year to not only incredible reviews but probably one of the best racers uh, in gaming to date. Um, I, for me personally, there are three that jump off the page. Uh, well, actually, I have several. Uh, Motorstorm for the PlayStation 3, still one of my favorites. Absolutely love that game. I hope that that uh, uh, Sony brings that series back. I know the studio doesn't exist anymore, but I hope that they do come back, at least bring, I, I would even at this point take an HD version. And and I, and I hate to say this, I know I'm, I'm the problem. I would pay full boat for that because that's how much I love that game. In the same conversation, um, uh, uh, Burnout 3, uh, probably one of my favorite racers from that era, uh, absolutely still holds up to this day, especially uh, the crashing is just, it's just unbelievable. And uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, uh, Xbox mm -hmm. 360 PS3 launch game, still one of my top racers to date. Um, but listen, uh, Forza by Playground Games, what can we say, folks? Um, outside of the only complaint that I have is that we don't know what the DLCs are going to be, which mm -hmm. I'm imagining will be brought to our brought to fruition in what they're doing, at least for the first one next month, probably on June 12th, when Microsoft uh, does their uh, Xbox Bethesda show, I, I would imagine we're going to get a full on trailer. I don't know what it is. I've been saying for a while that I would love to see Hot Wheels come back. I mean, that was still uh, Forza Horizon 3, still, still one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But Forza Horizon 6, folks, is apparently in early development. And I, I got to talk about that with this panel. But but here is the big question. Um, there is a region in the world that seems to not exist in the same planes as several of these big developers, and that's Japan. Um, we have been calling for Assassin's Creed to go make their way to Japan. And after countless, countless games, still nothing. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, there has been, a, a, this is going to be uh, Forza Horizon number six. I think it's time for playground games to deliver a radiant beautiful looking <laughs> incredible setting japan for their next racer yeah. i mean we've seen england we have seen uh the hot wheels uh dlc we've seen the snow mountain we've seen mexico which i mean again they had so many biomes it was incredible how many different uh, you know, shades of green and white and 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 uh, and brown that there were in that country, uh, beautiful looking country from one end to the other, but Japan is the place that I think I would love to see them go next. Now I know that's that. Listen, I'm saying it, but I'm not the only one. Let's start off with our guests and get your opinion. And we're going to we're going to go first to Steel Rain. Steel Rain, oh. look. I play this game as much. I mean, I have I have tons and tons of footage uh, recorded to, uh, that everyone has seen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes more more so than others. Mm -hmm. um, Forza Horizon Five is a master class racer. That there's there's no. Yeah, I mean, you, you there's no the, 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 there's no denying it. Mm -hmm. For Forza Horizon Six, which I'm actually surprised that we're talking about this. I don't know. What are we? <laughs> six months? Six okay. months out from its uh, launch. Do you want to see it uh, arrive in Japan for its next release, potentially in two years? Boom. That's kind of that's kind of a question that I just have to I got to hit you with. Of course, man. Like, that's the <laughs> one thing that we've been kind of clamoring on, especially going from four to five to now going into six, where it's just kind of like, hey, man, when y'all going to Japan, like just because that makes the most sense now. For me, just as an avid Forza fan, um, and now also an avid Forza Horizon fan, because that, that is their arcade racer, um, arcade sim racer, if you want to throw that in there, I think that's going to be the the best place to go, not only to take take advantage of the current gen hardware, but also just to kind of push racing forward again, right? Um, the one thing that Forza Horizon for me, and before I get into that, I do want to touch on, it's not necessarily surprising that, they that they're talking about it now. 
because again, development has to start at some point. You're starting to come up with ideas, design. Um, they probably have been in talks with Turn 10. Hey, guys, we figured out this and this. You can tweak the engine in these ways. You can implement these different things into your next game. How, how do you want to do these things? Like, how do you, how would you implement these in Horizon? Um, and they're probably going back and forth. So they're already trying to get those designs and what they're going to implement in the new game, right? Um, along with, as we're waiting on the expansions for Horizon 5, because they still have to at least support that for two years if it's going to be on par with what they've done in the past. Um, the one thing for me, though, if they take it to Japan, I really want to see Horizon amp it up to this next level. Need for Speed has seemingly went to the wayside. Need for Speed Heat, I thought, was a, was a, was a good game. Um, it, de it still was missing some of the... I don't know if it was the way that the cars drove themselves, but there was still a disconnect for me that it was it's not the same as, as it was in, like you brought up in Most Wanted. I'm talking about the older Most Wanted that came out on the original Xbox, not the newer still one. one of the best. One of the um, best in the, the whole series. It is. And then also in the Underground, uh, yeah. whether that be the first or second Underground. The main thing that I feel like Horizon is missing out on is AI cops, AI police, AI car chases. And mainly because, to me at least, I feel like it would it would evolve evolve the gameplay, especially in a Forza setting, right? Like, no, you're not going to get that in your sim racer in a most in a motorsport, of course. And they have game modes, cat and mouse, and things like that that you can try out in that to kind of get that idea of it. But I think taking it to the next level to where you can not only in implement maybe car crashes more on an epic scale kind of like what you had in the need for speed games back in the day like if because of the cops rammed you and whatnot you had some epic moments if you ran into like when you run into uh when they're lining up to try to block you or whatever the case might be set up a barrage or whatever the case a barricade excuse me or whatever the case and you bam right through right through them and you see that like epic cut scene it's like oh slow motion everything just gets real epic i think it'll be really cool to see that in like a motorsport setting or uh, excuse me a horizon setting um, and I think Japan would be the perfect place because I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, um, but Mav and Pong have been hitting this nail on the head for me, at least personally, with Tokyo Extreme Racer. Um, yeah. And for a lot of people, they may not remember that game. And I would definitely ask you to go check out that gameplay. I played it originally. I played it on PS2. Uh, Mav goes back to Dreamcast and whatnot. But um, there is a a very integral piece that they could pull out of that, especially when it comes to highway racing or just how they evolve racing overall. Um, so that's another uh, avenue that they could take. There's just so much, not only beauty, um, art, of course, uh, design that they can go into and taking advantage of the way that Japan is set up, the highway systems, the streets, uh, the buildings, everything that I would really love to see it in a Horizon game. Um, so that's me personally. Of course, again, I don't I don't necessarily think it's too early to be talking about it. Of course, it's like, hey, well, we haven't even heard of an expansion yet. So why are we talking about the next game? But it's one of those things where I'd imagine because I'm not a game dev where you're oh, you're always working on what's going to be the next thing. How are we going to iterate on the next product? What are going to be our new ideas? Let's throw some things up on the wall and uh, let's see if we actually fulfill those things. So um, it gets me excited. I think Japan is the only way to go at this point. There's too many people that are clamoring for it. There's yep. no other location to me personally that would make sense unless you go to like like a New Zealand or something. But even then, like that doesn't speak car racing to me. Japan does. Yeah, oh, and yeah. that's kind of like Especially the, the underground right scene. Now. Yep, exactly. And, and that and that is exactly why it's an important point to remember that. Boom. Why I feel like they may take some of the older Need for Speed aspect and this. Next Horizon game might be the first one that we get with the most customization op options that we have ever seen in a Forza game. So, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I look, look, we all love change, right? Change has to come for sure, um, and uh, that would be a big one. But location is going to be be key to the conversation. Uh, Travis, let's get your opinion on this. Um, obviously, uh, Forza Horizon Five broke record record numbers in players and it was it hit 20 it hit 20 million players before we could even blink an eye it shocked a lot of people i i think it even surprised microsoft and that was because a it was an xbox game pass and b word of mouth played a tremendous part in making this game successful for sure uh for you personally 
I don't know. I don't know whether or not you are a big Horizon fan or you're more of a motorsport, you know, uh, sim racer uh, fan. But we're, you know, we're talking about potentially. And again, it's 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 a floating rumor. We don't know if it has any substance to it. But Japan does seem like the the evolution for that uh, that arcade type of racer. You know, specifically because the underground scene is so big in Japan. What are your thoughts on this? Do you want to see it uh, come to Japan? Uh, no, I don't. Um, okay. I, 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 frankly, I'm kind of sick of people talking about Japan and video games. You know, you got like, <laughs> we, we, it's so overrepresented in games media. We got, you know, uh, Ghost of Shishima, we're in Japan. We got Trek Diomi. I just got oh. done reviewing as a, you know, in Japan game. It's made right. by a Swedish studio. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a cultural touchstone and I get that it's close to gamers, but personally, I'm sick of Japan, and I think uh, there's <laughs> lots of other places in the world that we can go. I also think people who talk about Japan are thinking too small for a racing game. I mean, we're talking about a new engine that Turn 10 developed for, for Forza Motorsport 8. Uh, yep. It's going to be their first game in five years. 2017 was the last Forza mm -hmm. Motorsport game. So I imagine the next Forza Horizon game is going to be technically a lot different than Forza Horizon 5. And we already have video games that have, like, for example, the entire continental United States as their setting. So why are we looking at just one small island uh, as, as a potential festival site? I just think uh, hopefully they're more ambitious. Also, hopefully they just do something original. I feel like I've seen Japan a mm. lot. And, I mean, uh, they could do... Italy, we've got you know all the ancient structures there. Uh, you can drive through the Colosseum. That would be kind of cool. We could do maybe a, a more city-centric area, uh, since Japan is is mostly rural. It's got a few big cities, but mm -hmm. they, you know they could do my neck of the woods, San Francisco. I'd love to drive in like a dense city with lots of hills and stuff like that. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if they do Japan, I think people will cheer and and be happy about it because they got the thing that they wanted. But I, I personally would hope that they would subvert expectations and maybe do something completely different that we don't see, see coming. Or maybe it's not just limited to one area. Maybe we're going to multiple festival sites now and, and it, it, it's just something that we didn't see coming. So I'd be happy with that. But to answer your question, yeah, I'm a big Forza guy. I actually did the, uh, the wiki for uh, Forza Horizon 5. So Whoa, very, nice. very familiar with that game. Right. Nice. So, so, well, there, there, and folks, there you go live on the air. I learned something. That's pretty awesome, dude. Uh, to have that under your belt, uh, obviously <laughs> anything with the wiki is important. Uh, and I, I literally, I literally just donated to them. I, every time I get, uh, uh, you know, a, a message, hey, you know, keep wiki or you know, uh, functioning. If you use it as much as I do, and I use it quite, qu quite frequently, um, it's not always a hundred percent. That's why I like to double and triple check because it can be mistakes can be made. And uh, but if you uh, you support them, if you if you use them as much as I do. They usually ask for like a dollar donation, and if if a million people donated, well, it's a million dollars. Um, so make sure that if you are using Wiki to uh, a Wikipedia to uh, to 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 donate Sorry, when I, you can. I, sh I should clarify the IGN Wiki. So uh, okay, well they see, yeah, that's what that I'm makes sense. <laughs> that's that, that's that, that makes sense. But, of, yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah, that used to. Yeah. No, no, no. But listen, you, you, you're doing something, brother. You're out here, you know, putting down, uh, putting down the, the the heavy steps, and we definitely appreciate it. But before <laughs> I get into math, um, let me get two two super chats come in. Uh, your baby father drops an outstanding five dollars super chat. Says blessings, boom, panel and chat. Glad I can catch you live, and thank you for the you know the uh, the pronunciation correction. I definitely appreciate that, and of course, thanks so much. For being here, Sir X Man, good friend of the program, he drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says they need to bring us a true burnout uh, sequel. I repeat, yeah, I, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, man. It, it's it's EA's had their chance with it. Criterion is they're just not the same. They're just not the same anymore. I can't say why. Um, it, it, there really hasn't been a proper or well-reviewed burnout uh, as good as three and there's been quite a few of them so it's i don't know if we're ever going to get a burnout three again i'm going to be honest i would love to say that we would um yeah you want to say something uh steel oh no i was just gonna say yeah i'm kind of over burnout burnout those older races man they're just like in this day and age it's just not it's not the same as it was back then. Like they don't hit the same it's the same racing the racing genre is having the same issue that the fighting genre is kind of having to where 
it's becoming niche to a certain point. Like, yeah, you're getting engagement, especially in a service like Game Pass. Um, and Gran Turismo is getting, getting some attention too. But after that initial, you know, that initial release of ecstasy or whatever you want to call it, um, you fall off of it very heavily. And the yeah. only people that stay invested are people who like that kind of thing. And games like Burnout, I mean, unless they really, I, I don't know. I don't, I couldn't even imagine how they would be able to reinvent it. I tried to play the most recent Burnout. I know that came out a long time ago, um, well, a minute ago now. Not, not but, that good of a racer, brother. I hate to yeah, say Yeah, I, I didn't like it. But, <laughs> it, but man, and maybe that's just a bad example. That's why I'm like, I'm so clamoring for games like me. I want Need for Speed to come back to the forefront. Because it did the thing that, like, when, when I'm asking how to, out of Horizon, I don't need to ask that if I have a need for speed to run to. And that's what I had before, and now I don't have that, which is kind of the problem for me. But Yeah, no, um, absolutely. But yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, uh, Mav, let's get your opinion on this. Uh, obviously, two two separate, uh, we have a, a pair of bookends here, which is great. Travis doesn't want Japan. <laughs> <laughs> um, he thinks it's an overrated location. Still, random myself, we believe Japan is the, is the place. Uh, where do you kind of fool? I mean, listen, Japan has been represented in games for years. Um, but racing is one that seems to have been absent from the, uh, you know, from, 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 you know, from the report card. Do you want to see Forza potentially return to the land of the rising sun? Yes, but not for like a lot of the reasons that some people want, you know, and like, um, I, I'm not all for like the countryside aspects and stuff. Like a lot of people are, that's one thing, you know, that yeah. about Forza Horizon, they, they, they keep doing that. And mm -hmm. that's very like, it's a very You're big about part the festival, of uh, uh, well, the festival, you know, it's all it's like, like open, open lands, areas, yeah. open, open fields. And you, you got doing. like what, long, long rows that go out into the countryside and a lot of that. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Right. But I would like to see Forza do the city thing, right? Okay. I want to see Forza go into a big city and really take that step because that would be different for them. And that would be a, a change because I think if Forza Horizon 6 comes out and it's another big open countryside game, it's going to be great. But again, that's just like going to be more of the same that we've been getting. And for me, if I'm picking a city... I go to what I know in my memories, right, of playing, like Steele said, this game that just grabbed my heart back in the day, and that was a Tokyo Extreme Racer. Now, I think about that game, and then I think about what would be possible now. And yeah, that's why true. I want that's why I want Tokyo. Exactly. I don't even want it to be Forza Horizon Japan. I want Forza Horizon Tokyo, right? I want them <laughs> to go all out and big on the city i want the lights i want the highways i want everything you know maybe go a little bit on the outskirts you know for some festival stuff right into the into the outreaching areas around tokyo and stuff but i really want that full highway system i want to go into the city have like uh events go on within there as well right um i i think it would be a, a really good different change for horizon not that anything's wrong with it now but I'm going to be playing Forza Horizon 5 for years. You know what I mean? I agree. Yep. I don't necessarily need another one like that for like four years from now. I'll be content. I'm I'm just keeping it real. Like I think they could come out with expansions and updates on that for a few years, and I'll be happy. Um, but for 6, I want something unique, something different that Forza hasn't done before. And we haven't, like, I, I know, like, like, Travis, I get your point. Like, Japan's utilized a lot. But... I ha it hasn't been done in racing in a great way in a long time, right? And and it, it is very a huge part of the culture of the racing culture, right? Especially with with tuners and you know customization, and you know I I picture this in my head a lot of nighttime racing. You got all this big city lights going through the downtown areas on the highways. You're challenging other people. You got the neon on the cars and. And all this stuff, it kind of gives me that nostalgia feeling for what it uh, was back in the day. But the, keep it going like that, move it forward to make it something we've never experienced before in a in a game today, right? Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. I mean, that's a pipe dream, you know. That's like if I could like make a a dream come to fruition, right? That's what it would be. So we'll see. I mean, other alternatives, you could say, okay, maybe they could do like 
Forza Horizon Dubai. Something okay. like that. Oh, wow, yeah, pretty, that's great. Yeah, I like that. Sick. Well, right. I mean, there's there's lots of different DLC. places I agree that they could go and make an amazing game. It's just that nighttime racing element there for me, going back to the culture, you know, all the movies, all the all the um, history of, of the cars there, the cars that come from there, everything I think is just uh, would be perfect. Right. Not just for to me. be clear, I, I would be I would. happy with anywhere that is a location in a Fast and Furious movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Tokyo Drift, Brazil, <laughs> Dubai. I love it. That, that, that is true. That is true. Well, you could grab a lot of the culture and take elements from like something like Tokyo Drift, right? And like um, <laughs> apply it to this, you know, because I have love the it. whole festival aspect to it and everything as well. You know, there's, yeah. I, I just, man, it just, it's too perfect not to happen for me. Yeah. And I, I feel like we've missing that ever since the Need for Speed Underground games left. They tried to recreate it with Heat a little bit with that nighttime it's city racing element, but cool, it just didn't bro. click, man. The racing was kind of weird in Heat. I don't know if anybody else felt that, that like the way yeah, the cars handled and the way yeah. the camera angles were. The cars felt really, very, very floaty. Yeah, it, it just um, didn't really click for me. Yeah. I mean, the whole FMV stuff going on with like the the people, you know, I, I just that game didn't click for me. I. I, I feel like the genre needs a boost, and Steel's right about this too, with racing games and and fighting games. I think part of the issue is they're relegated to such budgets because there's thought of like second tier genres from these publishers. Where like we're gonna try this, we're gonna try this, we're gonna allocate this budget, try it, we're gonna try this. Back in the day, these used to be like some of the ma- biggest mainstream games that came from the publishers, right? They yep. were like fighting games and racing games, and those were like up there with the best-selling games of any genre, right? So you had more of a focus and attention put to them. Now it's like, hey, you know, we're this got its audience. We're going to try and make something, see if it, it clicks. And if it doesn't, we'll move on and try something else. I want them to go all in, big time, big budget. Microsoft's the only one, really, that's been doing it right with that, you know, treating it like it like it should be, like full budget, you know, go all in, go all out on, on their game, on the racing games. Uh, so I think they would be the ones to make this happen. I'm holding out hope for Need for Speed. You know, we don't know what it's going to be yet. It's but EA. They- All I could say is that the, the the conversation unfortunately starts and stops with two letters. Yeah. EA. I, you know, I'm I, hoping Codemasters I, they, yeah. can kind of revitalize exactly. the racing racing with EA. You know, like because I, I would I would like to believe it because we'll Dirt Five is one of my favorite racers yeah. uh, of this gen outside of uh, Forza. I mean, Dirt Five. I put so much time into it's it's bonkers how much time I put into that game. Loved every minute of it. So yeah, may, maybe Codemasters can restore uh, the faith back to yeah. uh, racing for EA. I, I I don't know. Yeah, I think this last one though is being made by Criterion. They had gotten pulled off of it to help with Battlefield, and now they're finishing their game. Or, or so um, there is rumors that I think it's like current gen only, going to be on only on like uh, the. I Xbox hope so. I, access I, 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 listen, five, so. If that happens, it's, maybe, maybe it's going to be great. We'll see. Yeah, well, indeed. Uh, Josh, let's, uh, you're into racing. Obviously, you play uh, Mario Kart 64. Uh, there you go. Uh, for you, uh, we've heard some great opinions. If, as a matter of fact, I really got to go back to something that Travis said, and it really sparked something in my mind. Um, he said something, why be locked down to one region, meaning Japan? Now, I want Japan. I, I still want it, but... I would wonder if they would be able to be a moving festival throughout. Uh, I, and again, I don't want to use the the gas the games as a service kind of uh, conversation. I don't want to do that because what that does is it, it, it turns a lot of people off. But the, the next Forza Horizon, let's say they just call it Forza Horizon, and it's an ever growing world where you can race your your cars um you know the the festival is going to be in japan for this season next season we're going to be in australia season after that we're going to be in san francisco this is this is a this is and again it's going to be the new engine obviously uh the 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 current engine looks gorgeous but i'm sure it has its limitations as opposed to uh the new engine that they've created for um uh, motorsport which we'll get to get a chance to see hopefully this june where do you fall into that So, Travis actually got me thinking in a completely different direction. Uh, 
and we, we kind of this kind of ties into our cart conversation a little bit and I, there's mm. probably no way this is happening okay like n not a chance but i'm just gonna have a little bit of fun with it but we're watching halo here thanks to the halo show we know fords exist in the halo universe so <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> we could uh we could just explore some of these other uh some of these other worlds imagine imagine just hanging out on a halo ring with a bunch of tracks, you know, checking out new Mombasa like it was in Halo 2, right? Going to uh, getting into Gears of War, like leaning into all of the different uh, the, the cities. Can you imagine just driving through locust infested, uh, you know, cities and gears that that. Uh, and the, the, the where I get this from is like you have an Animal Crossing track in Mario Kart. Yep. Right. And and getting to see those characters come to life and and the way that the. the the devs get to get creative with this stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. Japan sounds amazing, right? But I mean, I can I think back to playing the Forza games and I'm like, I'm in the snow. I'm up in the mountains. I really have no <laughs> clue where I am, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just, it's just, a, it's just the mountains. Like, that's it. That's it, you know? And so I, I wouldn't mind seeing them get, I mean, they throw warthogs into, into Forza already. Like, just lean a little bit further into it. I, I don't know if it, it works for a full game. I don't know if people would even be into it because they enjoy the realism. I totally get it. But but to really, like, you know, like Steel was saying, like, lean into that need for speed, like the customization and everything, like, let them get, let them get creative. Let them take a risk. Let them lean into the arcade style of, uh, of racer that this really is. And, and, and maybe it's not even, you know, specific IP worlds, but, like, Maybe I mean we've been on Hot Wheel tracks, right? So we know yeah, yeah. this team has a desire to to get creative. Well, we've had Lego to, tracks, exactly. So, yes, sixty four. If you think that Playground Games is working on Fable and hasn't thought about putting Albion as an expansion, you're crazy. <laughs> That's exactly crazy. what I was thinking. It's like, perfect. Who wouldn't yeah. want to drive a car around Albion? Listen, as an I, I, I think I think the I like running that. theme here is if we don't get a, a, a Microsoft character themed race, a kart racer, we all should just riot. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I will lead this charge. Um, no, no. I mean, listen. One of the things that Microsoft has in an abundance is money. And right. risk, listen, there's always risk with making games. Making games is an expensive business. A lot of people forget that it is actually a business. Mm -hmm. And monies um, are spent not just on development, but I'm talking about everyday quality of life stuff for the devs. And sometimes that money is spent for five years before they get an R return in, in investment. Right? But Microsoft is in a position where they have so many developers um, we could see the return of Project Gotham Racing, right? Someone said it in the chat. I'm going to read their super chat now. I would love to see PGR return and be the third racer uh, in their in their you know you know rounding out you know adding to the list so we don't get um, uh, another you know a motorsport a you know two years after this one or or another Horizon and the car racing situation. I, I know it's 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 unlikely. It's it's an unlikely scenario, but it's one that I think uh, not only exists, but when you have uh, studios like Toys for Bob and you have Playground Games and you have Turn 10 Studios, uh, you know, we could see the return of a Diddy Kong-esque type of racer from Microsoft with their own characters. I, I think it's an incredible opportunity. Hell, I, I don't have the development skills, but if they want someone to lead that team, I'm right here. I, you know, I'm, I'm not working right now, so Microsoft calls, <laughs> I'll answer the phone. But let's uh, let's bring in VJ. Now, VJ, you are always one of the last to talk, uh, but we're going to bring you forward uh, more often than not. But, you know, but, but specifically for this topic, you know both sides of development, both from being in retail as well as in development. And, of course, you come at this from a third point of view, being a gamer, a podcaster, a content creator. Uh, <laughs> Japan, it seems, and you, you know Japan because you have been there. Is yeah. that the, the, the next evolution of Forza Horizon? No. Um, got some really good opinions um, from, the, uh, from the panel today, so it might be a difficult one. But... I think I think on the right occasion, um, you should take in consideration, um, commercially speaking, you know, in terms of the, the wisdom of the crowd. And firstly, I'd like to say 
I'm happy that there will be another Forza entry in the franchise. And secondly, like some of you, of course, um, I'd like to see the next uh, Forza to be set in Japan. And perhaps it's under consideration uh, at PGG. And the big, vague point, I guess, if I have one at all, is that Japan as a region for Forza 6 would be welcomed, not just by um, Japanese gamers, by, but by all Asian gamers, besides, you know, us over in here in the West. And and I would say perhaps immutably so, since Japan, besides being a sort of fascinating, enchanting proposition, for me at least, pers from my own personal experience, it, it also has been, I think, first or second in terms of the most popular tourist vacation spot for all APAC residents. And so if Forza 6, say, for example, is set in Japan, right, and obviously some of us on the panel have to get on board with that, um, it might be on some level uh, really helpful like in order to sort of garner awareness, uh, accessibility and perhaps greater popularity in Asia for Xbox and ultimately for its Game Pass subscription service. And <clears throat> I know we've got a disparaging sort of detractor in our midst and that's fine, each to his own. Even if you're sort of piously against, you know, popular choice and opinion, I can respect it. And to sort of help this avenue of thought or that avenue of thought, um, which is highly, obje uh, highly subjective opinion, and to sort of help move that along, I would suggest that Africa or France would be sort of monumentally and, and, and culturally good choices if Japan is not at the top of PGG's uh, or our guests' agenda. But um, for, for me, France, I mean, obviously, you know, from the UK, so I've visited France and other European countries. France is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. It's definitely in the top three, might actually be number one. I don't know what it is, you know, post the pandemic. So, look, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but I think I speak for some of us, at least, that whatever PGG decide um, or whatever location that they decide, it's something to be excited for, and we'll all look forward to it with bated breath. I, listen, I like what you're putting down, and I think everyone had incredible opinions. This, this is a solid way to open up today's uh, new episode of the Xbox Factor podcast. Folks, we are over 300 live viewers, closer to 320, to be honest with you, and I can't thank you enough for supporting Double Barrel Gaming. If you are new to the channel, folks, we crossed 10K in January, and we're marching. The goal for Mrs. Boom and myself would be 12K, and we're getting close. We are just we're 1,300 and change away from uh, hitting uh, 12K, and that would, be, that would be big for a channel that only started in 2017. And I've had made, I've taken some very very big strides in a very short amount of time, and I cannot thank you enough. If you are new, subscribe. If you are already subscribed, please consider hitting that like button. Love to see over 200 likes before we get on out of here. And again, what a way to uh, you know open up the show. But we got to get to topic number two, folks. And this one, this one is going to be good. Um, listen, uh, like, like I said in the opening, uh, last week, um, the X cast, which is a great, great show, obviously, uh, is run, uh, Paris Lily, uh, is on that panel as well as Snowbike Mike and, uh, G uh, Gary, um, oh, I forget his last name, bloody hell. Um, they happen to have a very special guest on kind of blew me out of the water, uh, because obviously, uh, the guy behind the 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 resurgence of Halo Infinite uh, was there, Joseph Staten, who has uh, was asked to come in during some development troubles over at 343. And uh, Paris, you know, Paris never shies away from asking the big questions. And obviously he asked a humongous one at that. And he specifically asked uh, Halo lead um if we would see the return of classic maps and he you know he, he was a little playful in the beginning but it's his back end compliments that had me really getting excited as a halo fan i'm i'm in halo season two uh season with lone wolves uh in deep i i'm literally uh, i think a match away from uh level 55 in the battle pass now yes i did do the 25 to jump uh you know I, I bought the premium uh battle pass and i bought a couple of levels but the rest of it is all work and i don't care if i if i if by next week or the week after i'm hit at 100 that's fine because i got to go back to a season one i'm only at level 52 there and finish off that uh never finished a battle pass in my life uh you know i don't play apex legends warzone not for so much for me uh pub eh, never really liked that so um 
Halo, though. Halo, I'm going to finish these battle passes. I am... I, I just... I can't stop playing it. It's just so much fun. My favorite mode, Fiesta. There's nothing like starting with a rocket launcher and sending that missile to somebody's face. That makes me more excited. Uh, and I love the fact that you never start with the same weapon. It's it's just it's complete madness, and it's fun. But let's talk about bringing classic maps back. Before we get into our guest, Josh64, or N64, Josh, I, I got to bring you in. You... You have a Halo show. You are uh, a Halo extremist to the core, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, listen, I think that bringing classic maps all the way back from Halo 1 to their 10-year planned Halo Infinite is probably one of the smartest things that they could do. Uh, I understand that uh, certain affinity is working on the, you know, quote unquote, you know, battle royale, or at least their version of it. So we know that it's going to be done. They made some of the best maps in the Halo franchise history. So I have no doubt that that mode is going to be good. But I mean, Blood Gulch comes to mind, Valhalla. You know, we got a, a few people's opinions on this for you. Hearing Joseph Staten specifically talk about bringing classic maps back. I don't know if we're going to see any unveilings at, at their June 12th show, but to say that there's, listen, it, it, you know, they put it out there. So I would imagine that they're talking about this. You know, what do you, what do, first of all, what map do you need to see them return to? What map do I need to see is, is, I mean, Blood Gulch is up there for sure, but at the same time, so is Zanzibar. Zanz, someone said that in the chat. I'll get to the super chats momentarily. Zanzibar is a, is a, is a really good one, man. It is. It, and there's a there's a very specific reason for it. I feel, it, and I can't remember all the map names, but I mean, you remember the remember the demo for Halo Three, where it was another asymmetrical. You started on the beach, you worked up into the you worked up into the base. Right? That wasn't like, Valhalla, right? No, Valhalla was a Blood Gulch uh, was a Blood Gulch kind of copy. Um, okay. But it was from it was all the way back from the demo when we all had crackdown and and wanted to play Halo. Um, for, <laughs> but for, by the way, I love the crackdown one. I, <laughs> I I actually bought the game for crackdown. I'm gonna be honest with you. I love crackdown. But yeah, continue. But, but it's those. <laughs> I, it, it in my opinion, Halo has been lacking those asymmetrical attack the base, get the flag, get out, plant the bomb, whatever it is, since like. Like Halo 3, I mean, I feel like Reach might have had some of them, but none of them really stand out as being super memorable. And I feel like there's been this sway towards, and I probably mentioned it on here before, uh, this sway towards just just the 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 competitive like esports side of things where there was nothing more fun than like I, I think one of the maps was like uh I don't know. Everybody would super jump on it in Halo 2. It's like it wasn't isolation. That was a Halo 3 map. But um, again, there's so many, right? But but I remember specifically being on my buddy and I drove into the base with the warthog. I got on the hood of the warthog. He punched the gas. I grabbed the flag and it launched me all the way back to our base. Right. That's awesome, and, dude. And That's nothing awesome. but Genius. good times and <laughs> laughing. And and it felt like the modes for the weekend warriors. Like you didn't have to like if you couldn't if you if you're if you weren't on point with your shot, you could still drive the warthog and be a part of the team and you know and 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 still have fun, right? Where you look at like Halo Five and, and Halo Four, the maps weren't all that memorable. There, there, there wasn't a lot of these asymmetrical. Let's go plant the bomb. Let's go get the flag. Let's get out. Like, like, it, it was just. It was like, and, and we're kind of seeing it with with Infinite now too, where it's just like the flags are on both sides, and you try to, you know, and there's not vehicles on the smaller four v four maps, and and we have one map that I think kind of is Behemoth, which I enjoy, but a lot of people don't. They say it's too it's too big for lack of starting with a BR. You know, so I don't know. There's 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 work to be done. But if we can get some of these classic maps, I think it can really inject some of the fun that Halo used to that, that Halo used to have. Right. The the gameplay of Infinite mixed with those those classic maps that were just really, really second to none. I mean, they set the bar. It's what makes it it they 
it's why our expectations are always so high for Halo games is because of how great they were. And, uh, you know, may, maybe there's some rose tinted glasses. I don't know. But if I, I would I would love to see these classic maps show up so that we can at least see were we right? Did will it bring new life into this uh, into this game? Will it will it uh, will it step it up a notch to where like, yeah, we can do some CTF on ma on games like our maps like Zanzibar and 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 how much fun is had there versus just the uh you know swing too far to the competitive side and then yeah. and then that then leaves big team battle like give us that middle ground give us give us that middle ground so that we have the options i i, I like what you're putting down i mean i, I listen what, what, they they have to go into these maps it's not cut and paste right development is no such thing anyone thinks that says otherwise is a boob uh, they're not going to cut and paste the maps put on there. They have to. They have to go from the ground up to make these maps work uh, with the current, you know, current Halo Infinite. I don't care how long they they, they should have a team working on just classic maps. Uh, besides the new stuff, and besides what a certain affinity is doing, uh, and, and on all of that, we still. I, I would. I would still like you know my single player content as well. Uh, they have a they have a very very steep hill to climb, but I think three four three, uh, not only is going to meet the challenge head on, I think they're going to conquer it. I think that uh, Halo Infinite might might be uh, a little light with the maps, but man, you cannot argue. I I would dare say that they're the 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 game's shooting mechanics. I think they're even better than Destiny. Again, I said it, so throw the hate at me if you will. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I I, I I like I, that boom. Yeah, I I I I think it is. I I, I think smoke. that what they've like done it. in both single and multiplayer was mm -hmm. a triumph. Uh, well, uh, and they punched well above their weight, considering the controversy that came with development with this game. I'm very very happy with what I'm playing. I I, can't, I just can't stop playing. I'm an OG Halo fan. I'm I'm quite enjoying myself. Um, but you said. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, I mean, it, I, I put about, about Destiny. Talk to trap. Talk to. Do we talk about <laughs> Destiny? I think some people might know that I have about five thousand oh, hours. Jesus, in Destiny. You, you're like my brother. My brother Neo oh. Mental has five. Yeah, stars. I was Close on 5, I was on hours. IGN's Fire Team chat for a yes. couple years. I <laughs> I do a weekly podcast where we talk about Destiny for three hours every week. So I know a little bit about Destiny. I uh, love that game, and I would say I agree with you. The shooting mechanics are better in Halo Infinite. And I, I think that that's uh, generally accepted among people that that understand like FPS as well, especially from a competitive uh, state. But the thing that they're not doing well is the games as a service part, which Destiny yes, absolutely which is nails, a, it, it's, think, it's yeah, think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I look again. It's it's light and content. Um, one of the things that I think that they need to, and again, I I, I don't want to go too far off and ve veer off here. One of the things I I, I want to see uh, uh, be better at is um, the customization of your Spartan. I, I think they they need to they need to make some big changes to that. I, I want. I mean, again, my Spartan is my Spartan with certain pieces of armor uh, and color palettes, but. There are specific armors that you unlock that you can't really change. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I want to see him do a little bit better with that, but I, I, I think you're onto something for sure um, with that. But you know, Travis, now, now, now that we got you on, before I get to you, brother, I got to catch up on super chats. There's been a, an abundance of them. Thank you so much, folks. The super chats do empower my wife and I to do the big giveaways that we do. We did one for Easter. Three more are coming, and the big one for Christmas is going to be a thousand dollar giveaway uh, in total. Uh, and that's open to the everyone. E, you know, we don't like to exclude anyone. Even if you are in the UK, UK unfortunately got sh gets short. You know, because you don't want to ship anything. But there's so many uh, cash apps that if you do win, we'll just send you the money and you buy what you want with it. Um, my wife is 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 really hard nosed when it comes to that. Everyone that wins, she wants to get a prize, and uh, she does do a huge amount of work behind the scenes setting these. Uh, big giveaways up and and we and we again it's just it's just a two-man team folks so uh if you, these are how we power it so let me get to some of the super chats first one is drawn tj generous friend of the program he drops an outstanding ten dollar super chat says hi everyone i hope that they show save the k3 and i hope that xbox buys embracer group in two years or or next year 
I mean, listen, this, that drum, you obviously have sitting right next to K. Asante, who's in the chat. He has been banging on that drum, and he, think it's the, he thinks it's the long play. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Let me just say that. Um, sir, oh, man, I lost it. Okay, hold on a sec. Let me find that. Man, this chat is really flying. Hold on. Just bear, bear with me momentarily, folks. I had it set up, and, of course, the chat is just flying by. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Um, uh, the, the next super chat comes in from our good friend, Sir X Men, who drops an additional five dollar super chat and says, Forza is a great game, but people will never understand the experience of a PGR racing, um, of, of Project Gotham Racing. There's something about getting those kudos, yeah, dude. You, you're definitely onto something with that. Drawn TJ drops an additional five dollar super chat and says, what I want for Forza is all of the customization from all uh, from all of the Need for Speed games in Forza. Yeah, they did have especially Most Wanted had dope uh, customization. Drawn TJ drops an outstanding additional five hours super chat and says the expansions could be the way to make the game evolve and go to new locations. Absolutely. Uh, drops an additional five hours super chat. Thank you for well two more. Well, thank you so much for the generosity, brother. He says. Whatever I can customize on my car in real life, I should be able to do in Forza. Uh, the customization is kind of boring. Um, yeah, it's 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 a little it's a little light for, for sure. And he says Project Gotham Racing, Midtown Madness, and Blur need to come back if uh, if you want different things. Blur was dope. I, I really enjoyed that. We also had um, holy matrimony. Split Let's, second. Uh, yeah, Split Second was that. so good. That's a Super great underrated. pick, dude. That is a fantastic one. A lot, one a lot of people didn't play. Yeah, that um, and Blur came out like the same year. I same think. time. Literally, yeah. I think in a month apart or even in the same month. Yeah, that was they're both great racers. RWK88 drops an outstanding $2 Super Chat and says, I really enjoyed Wreckfest Rec as a racing game. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. And um, F that... In the chat, drops an outstanding, very generous ten dollars super chat. And says, "Joyride Turbo would be a good template to start from." Um, Stunt Park was awesome, and 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 um, and we can use our avatar. Yeah, I, I actually quite enjoyed that. Believe it or not, for for what it was. Um, Drawn TJ drops an additional ten dollars super chat and says, "Halo Infinite needs all Halo maps on modes, as well as a new mode where you can dual wield." Yeah, dual wielding is something I would love to see come back as well. Uh, loved those MP5s uh, running around uh, dual wielding. Uh, he drops an additional $2 super chat and says, bring all of the vehicles back and weapons. I'd like to see some new weapons, to be honest with you. Um, Sir X-Man drops an additional $2 super chat and says, it's all about lockout and midship. Oh my God, two fantastic maps. So Travis, let's get into uh, what, um, what, what was said on the X cast. Um, obviously, you know, he said it playing, he was, you know, he was, he was, he was, he was kind of teasing a little bit, but I, I think there's some substance to um, what he had to say. Do, where do you fall with bringing back classic Halo maps? How, how important is it to Halo as a games, as a service? Um. I don't know how important it is to Halo's games as a service, but I do know that uh, they need new content. I don't really care if they're new maps or old maps. Uh, Me too, I, right I, there. I, I just, I kind of want them to just nail the game as a service model, which right now it seems like they're struggling with. So I talk about this a lot because I cover a ton of games as a service, reviewed Genshin Impact, which I still play when I can, you know, do Destiny, as you guys know. Uh, so I spend a lot of time thinking about this model and, um, there's a tendency to uh, proclaim that a video game is dead anytime it has a lull in its content. Uh, people want to play a game every single day, uh, all day. And if you aren't playing it, uh, you know, five months after the last content release, then apparently it's dead and it'll never come back because you can't release new content and have players come back. Right. But they, they don't yeah. do that. Um, so it's, it's sort of a silly conversation, but I, I think the conversation around games as a service and the way that you do that, right. 343 has some things really well, you know, they've done some things really well, which is uh, uh, the communication is really good. Uh, the fact that they're talking about their, their, you know, their cadence and what their plan is and updating the community is great. Um, and things that they're not doing so well, which is they appear to have not 
prepared for running a games as a service, even though they announced it as a games as a service uh, years ago, uh, they they don't really have much of a pipeline set. And, you know, maybe that has to do with crunch. Maybe it has to do with the fact that they, they don't really seem like they put together a live services team. But these are things that every game as a service uh, game make the same mistakes are made every single time. And the, the thing that separates the destinies from the anthems is uh, how passionate the fan base is about that IP and yeah. uh, whether the developer is actually willing to stick with it. And I think that when it comes to Halo, you're never going to have any fans not stick with it. They, that is one of the most beloved franchise ever. And 343 uh, seems like they will, they're in it for the long run, despite the Rocky star. And that's sort of what you have to do, right? I reviewed destiny, uh, vanilla when it came out and gave it a six out of 10. So, uh, this is a game I've put thousands of hours in and it was, it was not a great game, uh, when it, when it came out. So, um, I guess long story short, the game games have second lives. They have second chances just because they don't play your game for a couple months. Doesn't mean it's a quote dead game. It's not games really don't ever die the final deaths until you take their servers offline that's um, correct so yep. yeah I, I think that that anthem is a dead game like actually um so yeah. that that's uh that they're very different things um so uh yeah i i old maps don't particularly excite me i get there's some nostalgia there i i'm kind of looking for the fresh new but i think the important thing is that they just need to nail that content rollout whatever they decide making i would like to see them uh make new you know game types and and uh and throw throw some new maps out there and all that stuff but it seems like before we get any more halo infinite content we're probably gonna find out if that rumor about the uh the separate battle royale mode is true so we'll see uh we'll see where that goes that's my prediction for what we'll see on june 12th i don't think we'll have much more halo infinite proper uh, just because we just got a new content release so yeah i mean it does make a lot of sense i mean obviously th there is room potentially on the stage for some single player uh you know story driven content which is what i honestly really like um the startup to lone wolves had an awesome cinematic uh and when it finished i was like yeah i i I'm, i can't wait to play the multiplayer and start building on this battle pass but Damn it, I would really like some single player content after that story because I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, but again, that will come in time. And and Travis, I definitely think that you're on to something. Um, I I don't I, I are they are they doing better um uh than they were uh, I don't know uh, 30 days ago, potentially. Uh you <laughs> yeah. know, are they doing better than they were in, you know on on how to handle a gas game? Uh, than they were four months ago. I, I, I don't know. The, the, you know, obviously, the, a lot of people were disappointed with the fact that this battle pass is six months again. Um, but yeah. I, I, but with that said, I, I think they're going to continue building on it. And it is Halo. It is their number one IP. I, I do think that we are in for um, a treat eventually. Right. Yeah, they, they will. They will figure it out. They will get the people in place to make this a proper gas game. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I'm having quite uh, a lot of fun with it. Steel Rain, let's get your opinion what Joseph Staten had to say. Uh, obviously, classic Halo is something that many people look towards as the glory days of the brand. Mm -hmm. I, I right. happen to think that, you know, again, folks, I'm just speaking from, from my heart. Halo 3, for me, mm. for a multitude of reasons, was my ultimate halo fantasy come to re come to life a it released on my birthday 925 that year that it, uh, that it came out my wife surprised me with the console both controllers the collection it was it was just it was, it was a halo fest it was magnificent mm -hmm. and then then halo infinite comes along and just basically ruins that uh in the best way possible because i didn't i i, I halo 3 played for hundreds if not a thousand hours and loved every minute of it um, and now I can't stop playing Halo Infinite. For you personally, mm -hmm. where does the importance stack for Halo Classic Maps to return? Um, I think the importance stacks as a higher priority than it probably would have normally. Okay. Um, the main main reason for that is because kind of like what you guys have touched on, it's a it's a content kind of thing. You have to get into a stride and bringing back older maps. Of course, that's not what we would ideally would want to see. But um, I like to take that kind of comparison to gears to where 
Gears has always moved their maps forward, yeah. right? Um, so by the end of the game, or by the time you're getting you get ready for that next game, uh, they get into their third, second, third year, you have most of the map that you played on previously, and it just kind of adds to the rotation that you have. Um, so you're never playing, you can play for three hours and maybe not play that same map. Also, Gears also has a voting system, so that could probably add some variety there. Um, to me, I'd like to see the classic maps come back again because you you want to be able to get into something, pull from your older content, um, set it up for Halo Infinite specifically. That's another keynote where I want to pull from Gears because Gears has also done that, where when they move the map forward, they update it to the aesthetic of that game right so they when you go to gears 4 you have more of that aesthetics more bright and everything's not as dark and whatever the case might be and they could do take some of those key notes in the halo also um adding little things to make it feel more infinite like uh than they probably than it previously did and gives you that new yeah there'll be a lot of nostalgia with it at the same time but um you'd also have that a little new flavor to it which i think would be a huge benefit to what we have going on now and it would at least give them some space to work on newer maps and making sure they get their cadence right because that's the main thing that i see a lot of people talking about and it's just cadence the fact that we have other games that you can kind of look over to and we see this in in game development and again i'm not a game dev so i'm never going to sit here and say oh it's just easy you should just do this no but it is kind of dumbfounding in some fact, in some ways, to where you can look to other games that have done games as a service and kind of understand that maybe you shouldn't do certain things. So now that we're seeing Halo Infinite kind of struggling, at least on the games as a service side of things, you're like, okay, well, like, where have you been at the last decade? And I think that's the that's the bigger conversation that's really going on right now. I do agree with both of you, uh, with Travis and you, Boom, that um, it was one of the things that I said originally when Halo Infinite first came out and I first jumped into that campaign um, and then also got into actually the beta, well, the beta before that, before the game even came out, is that Halo does have the best first player, um, first person, excuse me, mine all over the place, uh, first person shooting since destiny there is nothing better as as far as a consistent standard goes and that's the main thing that i think that it has over destiny because there's too many factors in destiny that add on to the first person experience uh the first person shooter experience right um you have the different attributes that add on you can get less flinch or your weapons have different roles and everything else whereas halo everything is streamlined your gun is your gun uh you're gonna get the same flinch that everybody else has and i think that's what makes it a little bit better um but the main thing is bringing older maps back like Sidewinder from Halo 1. And I'm just going to go down a little bit of a list that I've created for myself because these are maps that I would personally think would be would fit really well in Infinite um, and actually are some of the ones that people have kind of been clamoring for too. So um, in Halo 1, you got Sidewinder, you got Battle Creek. Um, and then in Halo 2, I saw some people mention in the chat, you got Zanzibar, you got Lockout, you got Ascension, you got Midship. Again, I'm just going down a list of, of maps that could potentially fit really well within the Halo Infinite universe. Uh, you got Pit from Halo 3, Guardian, Sword Base from Halo Reach, um, Exile from Halo 4. I know you said that Halo 4 doesn't have the most memorable maps, but between Exile and Haven in Halo 4, those maps I think would fit very well in the Infinite um, as far as the, the shooting galleries that you would be able to have in there, the different angles that you could present, uh, the wide range of uh, team battles that can get that you can put implement in there. Uh, there's just so much variety, especially when you're seemingly having a hard time um, getting things together. That's the only thing that through what if I've learned anything from this whole Halo Infinite development cycle. Well, was one, I need a movie or a book so I can find out. Like I need, I need the tea. Somebody <laughs> needs to give me the tea because it is blatantly Spill that tea, obvious, damn it! <laughs> it's blatantly obvious to me that some form of management is a problem. Yeah. Some at some form. Yeah. Because it does not make sense for you to say, and they've come out and blatantly said it. Oh, like for the customization, for an example, you can It's you can't come out and tell people, oh, uh, well, you can't do uh, cross customization on your Spartan because that's not how the system. That's not how we set it up. Okay, so why are the bots doing it then? Uh, it, it, you you that's... you're creating a very 
it's like it just doesn't make sense at that point. And again, I'm not a dev. I don't know what all gets implemented in there, but it just makes that's why I say just from something like that alone, it's just like, man, there's there's something else behind that. But again, from Joseph State, you know, it's behind it, right? What? It's the it's the fact that the the game design and the community team are not the people responsible for monetizing the game. That's and true. The way that That's armor true. works is clearly a monetization design. Like some monetizing team was like, "Well, we'll create these separate, you know, frames that you then have to buy customizables for." And that's like, I, I bet you the community team is super frustrated by it. But like, they got to make that money on that free to play game, right? So that's that's just the the way that they went with. Which is which is which is understandable. But in that same breath, what well, it kind of turns right back into management because it's like at some point. Who looked at that and said, yeah, that's going to work. People are going to love that idea instead of just making it kind of go across the board and just say, hey, we I think it would be more enticing if you told people that, hey, here's more stuff in the store that you can buy for your Spartans. than we are locking it to specific things, though. I do agree with you. It definitely comes across like we wanted to separate it out because we wanted to make sure we were going to see some kind of profit from us putting this free to play model out. And but that's what also makes me kind of frustrated or why I can understand, not necessarily me, but why I can understand the frustration why people look at, uh, compare Halo Infinite to other games as a service. You're just like, come on, man. Like I can play Destiny right now, Destiny 2 right now, and I have the most customization that I've ever had. Mind you, it's a, yeah. it took a while, it took years for us to have the level of customization that we have in Destiny 2 now, but you still have some semblance of that um the entire time right so and i think that's the main thing that's missing i mean it is getting better things are uh moving forward i have I have faith in 343 and halo i know a lot of people don't uh but again i'm still going to stand on the hill that i do believe halo a year later come this november that it's going to be the game that it was intended to be originally. Yep, 100%. co-op forge everything uh we're gonna start that that's when they're gonna start hitting on all cylinders it's just, it can be frustrating when that's kind of like, that's been the mantra for these free-to-play games. Oh, give it a year. It'll be better after a year. And I think that's kind of more the thing that needs to be looked at. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think this is going to be a much different looking Halo Infinite. Uh, and, 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 the th and the thing, look, I, I've, I've, I've given 343 the business. I don't do it disrespectfully because I'm not a developer and I would, would never dare. Right. Um, with that said... When I have to give them the business, I am very, uh, very forward thinking of my opinions, and uh, I, I like what they've done. I, like I said, I'm, I I'm, sp oh, I'm spending every waking moment playing this game because, quite frankly, I can't get enough of it. Um, but I do want to see some big changes come. Classic maps as a classic OG uh, Halo player, man, that's just that would be so awesome. Um, let's one begin, more thing uh, though, but real yeah. quick. Yeah, sure. um, and and I, I'm pretty sure the, the panel could probably agree with me on this. Let's not be re, let's let's be remind let's be mindful that Halo is the only game across any platform, and this isn't like this isn't what about ism. It's facts. Halo is the only game that has to do everything right, or it's a failed product. It is, and that's it, why you it, see it, the narratives run the way that they are. Even though, like Ty, like Travis said, the game's not dead. I can find a match in less than five seconds. Game Dude, time. yeah. You know, it's funny. You, you, a couple of weeks ago, you actually specifically talked about that that particular uh, point of view during an episode of Living Split Screen, where if you're sitting there on your hands for five minutes, there's a problem. Yeah. I, can find, I can find any game type, any game type in seconds in Halo, which means that it's, it's, it's far from dead, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, good good point as always, Mav. Listen, if there's anyone of of this of this panel has played as much Halo as you, it's <laughs> Mav. Um, for you personally, as much fun as you had, and you've had quite a bit of it. You stream it almost all the time. What? Where do you put the importance of bringing back some classic OG maps? And, and should that be top priority to anything that they're doing right now? Um, I think it would be cool. But I don't know if it should be the top priority because for me that seems that I've I've played those maps. I you know I've I love those maps. I would like to get them in to Halo Infinite, but not at the expense of just like dumping them all, right? Hmm. Like I think over time maybe put a few in there, uh updated. I'd love to see a really cadence treated. of one per month personally. 
Yeah, some kind of just I want them treated with respect, but I also mm -hmm. don't want them to take away from creating new maps, right? Because they only have so many resources and so many people, right? So what are they working on? They're working on they they can't finishing up the campaign co-op. They gotta finish the forge mode, right? They gotta finish uh the pipeline for season three content. They gotta hopefully address the season two content where they said they're trying to figure out how to get more content out sooner. So they got a lot of things they're doing right now. Uh, certain affinities seems that they're pretty busy. If that rumor is true about the battle Royale mode, plus they're also assisting on halo infinite uh, as well. So we don't know hundred percent what they're working on with halo infinite currently besides the potential uh, BR expansion. So yeah. I, I think that I would love it. I want, but at the same time, like, I want it done the right way, and I don't want it to just be like, hey, you know, sorry that we have a lack of content. Here's a bunch of old-ass maps that you can play, right? Like, I have Master Chief Collection for that, and I'm happy with it. They continue to keep updating that game as well. So if I want that nostalgia fix, I can go and play uh, Master Chief Collection. Uh, that's if, I, if I may just jump in for a hot second, yeah. uh, that that's that's a big problem for me. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection should be one is what you got is what you got. Uh, I, I think that them trying to run that program as well as Halo Infinite is an incredible mistake. Um, yeah. I think it's very, well, very I, I think they've taken a big step back on it. I mean, they're still they still supporting have to. it. They absolutely, but like, that they, has to be put on the back burner. I won't, I won't criticize them for like still putting in content into a game that's like a collection for like the entire series pretty much, right? Like they they have taken a step back. There was new content added to it, but Recently, it's not too. like at yeah. the same. Mm -hmm. It's not anywhere near the same level of the stuff they're putting into Infinite, right? Like, there's a certain level there where it's like, okay, we're gonna keep kind of supporting this game, but the bulk of everything is being put into Infinite. I, uh, as somebody that enjoys Master Chief Collection, I still appreciate the fact that that game's going to live on, and I think it's gonna live on for a really long time. Um, if there's future updates with hardware. I would hope that they would maybe go back and even update a Master Chief Collection again. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a very important game because it has all of those old classic Halos in it. So I don't want to see that go go away or being stopped supported because I would hate to see that community die as well. But uh, as far as Halo Infinite goes, they do need to have that as a number one priority. I want to see a lot of work put into the new maps because that's the number one thing for content in these types of shooters. Because unlike other free-to-play games that we've gotten, like Apex Legends and Fortnite and, and, and a lot of these, this is like an arena shooter, right? So key for content and arena shooter over anything else is maps. And that's how you keep things fresh. That's how you keep things engaging. And I think they could really figure out maybe some ways to get more maps in there without just dumping in a bunch of old ones, right? Um, but like I said, it would be really cool, but maybe just do it like, maybe four every six months or like one a month, you know, like, like, like that, if they can get that pipeline going, but not if that's replacing the new maps, right? I don't want to see them just doing all the old classic maps instead of the new maps. And so then I'm like, at what, what kind of resources do they have to get this done? Cause I want new maps as well. Right? Like I want new creations because what the creations that they've made so far are Very well excellent. I, I love these maps. I absolutely love these maps. These feel to me like classic Halo maps. I agree with Josh. They're missing some of those like asymmetric, like capture the flag maps and stuff like that. I feel like they can capture the essence of what they're doing here and make some new maps like that. Yes. But the all of these maps that I've played so far in Halo Infinite feel like they're going to be classics, right? Agreed. Agreed 100%. 100%. Like, I I want more of that. I want more new amazing maps and i i i don't want to see what we want as holding them back from doing that right so i, I feel like the I mean? old the old maps are the low-hanging fruit just to get us like to get yeah. us additional from, new to, content to, to, yeah, yeah to, like, to get how, it from much, limping you know how much like, work do they have to put in to put those maps in or are they just oh, going to like just transfer listen, them over as a podcaster I, mean? I know all they have to do is hit control <laughs> edit like that is control, correct. Control, control, right. control, copy and control paste, v. my friend. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's a it's, standard in game yeah. development. A lot of people yeah. know that. Copy yeah. and paste. Maybe it's something that can it like, works. 
move over into Forge when Forge drops and be like, here, here's all of our classic maps. Th that right? makes me nervous, though, because if we get the reach treatment on the maps, I will be disappointed. I don't want everything to look like like it was pulled out of a futuristic I, I agree. Halo 5 100%. setting. You know? that's, like, why I, that's why I'm thinking, like, they got to do a lot of work on these maps to get them in the game, but they're not going to look like Halo Infinite maps unless they make them Halo Infinite maps, right? Yeah. yeah. And right then there. at that point, why don't they just make a new map? Because they're already proven that they're really good at making new maps. I think they take too long to make these maps. But, like, I want to see more of this because, like, this map that Boom's playing uh, on the screen here, I mean, I love that map. Right, yeah, I don't it's very very classic Halo for sure. Yeah, I don't like the the power seed mode, you know, that they have on it. All I the actually time, quite right? enjoy that. Yeah, I, you I like I, the power I like seed the power. mode. Yeah, I, I do. I um, I, like I do that. like it's a great capture the flag map, and that's probably the best map for the power seed, you know, uh, game type as well. But I mean, you got classic vehicle combat, like you're talking, Josh, about like, hey, you know, let's let somebody drive a warthog, you know, like you can get in a wasp, you can feel like you're dominating the match if you get in that wasp, you know. There's a lot of fun to be had on these maps, man. I just want to see more of that, mm -hmm. more of that. And um, if they, I want to see classics come back, but it's not at the expense of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Listen, I, I, I absolutely agree. So this has been a great topic. Uh, one, one, I didn't expect to be this long, but you know what? Here we are. Um, we do have, well, I am pulling one story. The the Trek to Yumi conversation I'm going to pull only because we got to get into the what uh, Venture Beat dropped regarding the puck or the streaming stick or the streaming device uh we're gonna get that to that momentarily uh but i got i gotta bring in vj into the conversation vj uh mm -hmm. we know that you're a big halo fan uh we know that you do like the single player content but you also like the multiplayer content <clears throat> uh where where do you where, where does your interest fall regarding what joseph staten had because some of the new maps they feel very classic that's that's 100 percent but again, they're struggling to bring different locations to multiplayer and the, the, the easy way. And I'm not saying easy, like cut and paste way. I'm saying that the best way that they could do it is, is they could turn the tide of conversation by bringing classic Halo maps to yep. Halo Infinite uh, based on what Joseph Staten had to say. I believe that they are. Where do you fall with that uh, discussion? Um. I just want to clarify i've not played much halo or multiplayer prior to halo infinite so so i kind of like listening to everybody's lot of really well-informed opinions uh yeah mine might be uh well let's put it this way my opinion is going to be sort of a, a layman casual short-sighted uninformed or fleeting opinion or slash perspective are you not well considered so so take it so take it as mm -hmm. such and look so Stepping back and looking, just looking at it from, uh, you know, sort of a, from a glancing perspective, it, it seems like a very quick, you know, content fix, uh, you know, delivering recycled, but much loved level maps, etc. And, um, and they might even be able to outsource maps in question, right? Uh, I don't know, right? right? And, and if, and if they're well received, it only helps Halo Infinite in terms of maintaining um, engagement and popularity, thus at least trying to stabilize, um, establish and, and grow the business model. And I guess, 343 three and Joseph, and you know I, I like Joseph very, very much, uh, uh, Boom, and because uh, when he came into 343 um, three Studios, we talked about it, and you know he was picking up a poison chalice at the time, right? And uh, right. we know about everything that went on back there, so I won't repeat all of that. And and look, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Either they have something in the pipeline or in the midst of sort of gauging public and fan interest slash feedback, um, and and that might be all in you know in in. Um, in preparation of marching forward for whatever they've got planned in terms of the pipeline uh, to keep Halo Infinite going. But ultimately, I've got no idea. Either way, it's it's an inexpensive and less time-consuming way to move forward via recycling and revamping the tried and tested. And for me, it's very much an inexpensive and highly profitable Nintendo strategy. And the basic yep. business objective has to be if you can, is to underpin the game and its potential in order for it to succeed. And as the man in black on our panel quite rightly mentioned, it's a beloved franchise. And I don't know if that's a little harsh. I'm not certain. And as always, my opinions are open to review. I mean, listen, I, I like what you're putting down. Uh, you, you never disappoint with your opinion. Obviously, you, you know, you're saying you didn't get a chance to play Halo multiplayer in prior no uh, installments. No one What's invites that? me. Nobody sends me an invite. Yeah, you know what? You're going to start getting invites even if you don't want them. Um, but listen, 
I mean, the show has been uh, uh, pounding with over 300 uh, p- uh, people here at, at live. Definitely want to say a big thank you to everyone that tuned in, that, uh, that, that you know, tunes in weekly for the Xbox content and conversations that we have. We got to get to one to friend of this program, Jeffrey Grub Grub, which the man has the best locks in the business, hands down. He dropped a very outstanding article on May 6th regarding Xbox plans to launch a streaming puck and also add a, an, uh, an Xbox app to all of the new Samsung TVs. And the reason why we're going here, and the one I have to talk about this, is because Microsoft, you know, a couple of years ago, Phil Spencer uh, said something that he got a lot of flack for. He said that uh, Xbox's goals were to hit 3 billion gamers. And, uh, you know, a lot of people clowned him on that. Uh, thinking that he was his, his opinion on how big Xbox could potentially be was uh, he was overreaching is some of the comments, Harry, that I, I remember reading. And three billion gamers. Well, that's that's a lot of gamers. Um, and when you look at what how they struggled uh, mm-hmm. in the uh, prior generation in the Xbox one selling half of what Sony sold, you could be right by feeling that maybe he was making a a bold statement, if you will. But looking at what they have been up to uh, quietly, uh, sneaking around like ninjas, uh, we talked about the two-prong approach that kind of, I I honestly believe, caught Sony with their pants down this generation. And that's, of course, they have the big boy known as the Xbox Series X, but they have the Xbox Series S. And not only is it selling every time that it's in, and it's in quite often now, um, it's selling in other countries that normally Xbox really had no gains, uh, no ground to gain, Japan being one of them. I mean, my timeline is littered with new Japanese gamers posting their picks that they went out and bought an Xbox Series S. Well, thanks to Jeff Grubb and his reporting, we now know that there is a streaming stick slash puck potentially coming to Xbox. And why this is important is because you know they there's there is a a a a casual gaming market that that sony tapped into last gen that saw at least 80 and i say 80 but i'm thinking more higher to 85 percent of sales of the 115 million consoles sold besides return console owners like myself my brother i mean we're good for eight by ourselves for the playstation 4 over the course of upgrading for special edition consoles and upgrading to the Pro and getting a special edition Pro, we, we all have done it. We've all purchased a, a console multiple times. But the casual market reigned supreme for Sony for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, sure, you can easily uh, uh, you know, equate that to their strong first-party output, right? They have some of the best in the business, hands down. They marketed Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales a couple of, uh, you know, a few years later to high, high regards. And they did very well. And believe uh, uh, Spider-Man is over 20 million. Miles Morales is, is, is climbing and would not be surprised if it does hit that eventually. Um, but this, this streaming puck, this streaming stick, whatever it winds up being, has the potential to logistically close the door on this generation for Sony. Mm. And and I say that I take it, I'm not discounting. They just, they just announced they've sold nine, almost 20 million PlayStation fives, no easy feat. Uh, and one of the things that trouble Sony is obviously getting these consoles made. Why is that? Is it just a chip shortage? Is it, is it, is it, is it are, are one out of two chips still failing because they're overclocking them? I, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. I can tell you though, there is something in business called an impulse buy, and it has. We've seen many, many instances in electronics that mm-hmm. you see something on a shelf, and you are casual gamer A, and it's ninety nine dollars, and you look at it and you say, "I came in for bread and milk and eggs, but god damn it, I cannot turn away from that hundred dollar device that's sitting there looking at me." My, my wife is going to be pissed, but you know what? I don't <laughs> care, right? And if if what I'm about to say comes to fruition, Sony is in trouble. 
I say that because they do not have an answer for the fisticuff that has has taken up uh, that has been put publicly against Microsoft. They were the champ. They're no longer going to be the champ. They're, they're, uh, and I say that this is very what I see happening. Mike Tyson, incredible boxer. You saw what he can still do with that guy on the plane, who, by the way, looked like he deserved it. He looked like an a-hole. But I, I'm not condoning violence. Um, he was reigning champ, and he would just decimate people. First, first round, just destroy them. And a little dude uh, named Buster Douglas Ooh. came and knocked his block off for everyone to see. He's never the same boxer after that. He just destroyed him. We're, we're seeing Microsoft be that, that Buster Douglas right now in front of us. They have been hitting on all cylinders. Yeah, there's been a couple of bumps in the road. But for the most part, they have put Sony in a corner. And I say that because if this streaming thing is real, and we believe it is, Jez Corden has been talking about it, who's a friend of this program, for many, many months. And they launched this streaming, again, puck, stick, whatever you want to call with a controller, with three months of Game Pass, and this little puck for 99 bucks, it is, it's over. Generation is going to be over because what's going to wind up happening is everyone that is a, considered a normie or casual gamer that doesn't buy more than two games a year on their PlayStation are going to look over and they're going to see xbox game pass and the first time that their friend says to them i just got call of duty for free because that's what that's what most normies uh, equate game pass to oh i just played i just downloaded this game for free because they don't consider paying the 15 dollars a month a lot of money as opposed to here in new york 76.43 for any playstation game ridiculous that's five months of xbox game pass and the, the, the common denominating factor here is Call of Duty. Like I said, I, I originally said that Call of Duty wasn't the big play here for Activision Blizzard. I, I'm, I've changed my stance on that. It absolutely is. Because once they could put that on the box, this $99 box, and stack them in your Walmarts and your Targets and your Best Buys, it is going to be a nightmare scenario for SIE and Jim Ryan. Um, but I, I do want to bring uh, the panel in. I think I've talked enough. And I want to go first to Steel Rain. Steel Rain, you, you, you guys, you and Punk Soul talked about this on Saturday. Fantastic show, by the way. I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm painting a, a nightmare scenario, um, and I don't think that Sony's going out of business. I don't think that they're going anywhere. They're the market leader currently, but I, I, I think that Microsoft has been quietly putting this plan together of dominance to retake the market as if, as when they did in the 360, 360 era. If this comes to fruition, uh, we know that the S is selling like hotcakes. Uh, we know that Game Pass is uh, probably closer to thirty million, if not already crossed. How do you personally feel this this streaming, uh, you know, puck stick has a place in this generation? Um, what do I feel it has a place for me personally? Um, I feel like it has an integral part to what the future of gaming may entitle now. I kind of say that very loosely because we're also going to be very dependent on how technology moves forward, right? Right. Um, kind of like what we've seen in um, internet in the last decade or so. You know, when you we are going from one to the next and the next. Um, when you had that dial up and then you, you take that next level and then you get those faster speeds. Um, still today we're we're having an issue to where you can get have access to the majority of people that are xbox ideally the three billion gamers that they're trying to reach and i think that's the biggest hurdle we're going to end up facing now none of us know how big of an impact um 5g 6g 7 who knows what g will be at by that time comes around um or how fiber might end up evolving things with internet and everything and that's not even readily available everywhere i don't have fiber but i do get speeds over 500 gigs so mm -hmm. it just depends on really the technology for me now, I'm also a huge proponent, um, as I always say, for the age of accessibility, which I do think we are in. Um, the cloud offers a lot of different options, and depending on how it ends up being used, um, 
I'm bearing on one key point. I don't know um, if you guys saw the numbers that had uh, that MS put out, uh, but I had Satya smiling real big on it or whatever. I put it on the show this past weekend, and yeah, it was that. it basically displayed that cloud services is Microsoft's number one um, avenue earner right now. Uh, that's where they're making the most money right now. Um, so it only makes sense they try to look for more avenues to tr- to take advantage of that space um, because. To be honest, I mean, as much as AWS is a thing and Amazon's a thing, whatever the case, um, Microsoft wants to be the main proponent for cloud. And what better way than putting out a streaming stick at $100 included controller, $150 if you want to really take it to the max level. I don't think it'd be that high because then you're starting to compete with your system. Yeah, $99 is, 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 the, is the power price. And, and, right. and again, I, I can't specifically say how much a controller costs. They sell for $70 or $60, bucks, 60 or $70. Bucks. I would imagine that parts, labor, you know, uh, marketing, twenty. Let's let's say for, for 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 shits and giggles, it costs Microsoft twenty five dollars per controller. Maybe right? so they they might they might take a little bit of hit on the profit side that they can make on those controllers and everything to put in that bundle package. Yep. Uh, but like I mean, like you said, it definitely enters the territory of a. It's like a, it's like a seamless buy, right? You just yeah, walk in the store, it's hundred yeah. bucks. Really, it's. I can play games on this. Game Pass is included with, or I I just got to get Game Pass. I can just hook this up to my TV and it works. Uh, that is a very interesting idea. Me personally, I'm I again. I don't see. I don't like cloud gaming. Um, from what I played through it, and I still believe in playing on uh, hardware devices. Traditional, I think, traditional yeah, hardware. And I do yeah. think that that that's going to exist as we move, at least for the next decade, maybe even a little bit longer. Uh. But the biggest thing for me, uh, again, the 3 billion gamers is definitely something we need to be able to get into. And the more devices that we can use to expand out the, not only the service, but just the industry and what Microsoft is trying to accomplish, I think that's going to be the overall better benefit. Uh, And I think that's just what they're shooting for, honestly. Uh, I think it's well worth it uh, as long as they get it right. And again, it's going to be a niche thing for, for, at the upfront. If it is something that is announced this year as rumored or whatever the case might be, um, along with the family plan, I mean, you're hitting two home, you're hitting two homers without even, I mean, I'm not going to say that you not put effort into it because of course you did. Um, but that seemingly is, is still a, a really high, it's like a high risk, high reward kind of scenario. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, because if people does, if it does catch on, and word of mouth takes over, then before you know it, uh, you have more people investing in your ecosystem than you did previously just because of that ease of accessibility. And I think that's the main goal. So, Yeah. yeah. Again, get, getting more Xbox uh, hardware, even at, at a $99 price point into more hands, potentially does change the conversation on how this generation is going to go. And, and, and when you look at what just recently happened that shook the industry from its core is the Epic Games uh, Xbox crossover, where now you can literally play all of uh, Fortnite, one of the most popular games on a freaking browser. Uh, and, and, and when you factor in that uh, right now, the um, the Series S, we've I, I've seen it advertised as low as... Two hundred and twenty-seven dollars. If that ever drops down to two hundred bucks, what you're going to see is a scenario very similar to that Black Friday where my, uh, where Sony packaged in um, Spider-Man 2018 and they had a special edition Two-hour bundle that was two hundred mm-hmm. bucks. And what did they do? They broke records that I don't know if we'll, we'll ever see them broken again. Uh, to be honest with you, so see. it's it's Microsoft finds themselves in a very very unique position where they are hitting on all cylinders from multiple angles and multiple hardware. Uh, Travis, let's get your opinion on this. The, the streaming uh, the streaming stick or the puck, as it's being called, has been talked about for quite some time. This is not the first time we're discussing it. It was discussed almost about a year ago that this was going to be the third uh, piece of hardware in the family of Xbox gaming. Uh, obviously, Jeff Grubb gets it right uh, more, more times than he gets it wrong how impactful do you personally think this potentially $99 piece of hardware to uh, get uh, w- would be for Xbox to, you know, to, to, you know, to get to the 3 billion gamers outside of mobile and traditional hardware? Uh, I, I don't think it ends up being very important at all. 
I I think that uh, the streaming for one, it's you guys talk about selling it to what, what you call normies, what I would you know call core gamers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I I think that even core gamers, one, they they have a hard time understanding that world of streaming, and they mm -hmm. also don't particularly like it. Uh, most most of those people don't even buy Game Pass because to them they just want to be able to buy the new Madden every year at a store. They're they're shopping at at GameStop and Best Buy. Uh, so I think they're they're separate uh, audiences for that. We've also seen this tried before, very recently. The Stadia did this exact same thing, except for they didn't even try to sell you a dongle. They just said, "Hey, just open up your laptop and play right into it." Uh, right. You know, I, I think that they had pretty good tech behind it, and uh, it sort of fell flat on its face, and and mm. they quickly decided not to do it. And I think that part of that is. Uh, you know, the, the, the core gamer doesn't necessarily live in a place with great internet. That's one problem uh, that they've not been able to overcome uh, that I think will continue to be a problem for the foreseeable yeah. future as long as we've got those insane monopolies running our I, uh, ISP services, yeah. which, you know, that, that's a whole, that's separate, a whole different uh, conversation. conversation. Yeah. But, uh, you know, oh. the, I, I think that that is, that is a reality, at least in the United States. Mm -hmm. Other countries as well have, have mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure uh, problems to overcome. I, I also just think that like in in the age of accessibility, which I agree, uh, accessibility is super uh, important. I think the idea of you paying for Game Pass and using your existing devices makes more sense than uh, buying a dongle to hook up to a TV. I also think that we live in an age where people expect that if you're going to sell me a, a cheap platform that is meant to be played uh, without physical or without the game being installed on a drive, that the expectation is that it's mobile, like the Steam Deck or the Switch. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would probably be better served for uh, a, a third branch of attack. Um, the other point you made about, about the boxing metaphor, uh, which I completely disagree with, I, I, don't, I don't even think PlayStation and, and Microsoft are boxing against each other. I think that their business models are so divergent at this point, right? Xbox realized that they were losing the game last generation so they they changed the game which is a very right. uh, that's what you do in business right uh and i think that their model is now working uh sony's model continues to work their walled garden uh, method of making games and, and just you know doing one thing really well is also great and nintendo is out here doing in insane stuff and that's also working and so i think that we live in, a, in an industry that's rapidly expanding and changing and i don't think that it's a zero-sum game anymore i think that they're they're fighting uh, at least a, a lot of the time for different customers, for different uh, different types of players. And I think that that's good. Uh, they can all be successful. Uh, I, I don't think it's a boxing match at all at this point. I think that we're just living in an era where uh, gaming is getting so, so big that we can have lots of people that are <clears throat> all doing their own thing and being successful at it uh, in their own sphere. So I, I don't know ultimately, you know, 10 years from now, what the, what the streaming situation would be, but I would say as part of this generation, I don't see a stick changing the game, uh, tremendously, uh, especially from the existing kind of entrenchment that we have where Microsoft's all about accessibility and, you know, giving you that service and PlayStation's yeah. all about their, their high end walled garden and, and Nintendo's doing their mobile thing. I, I just don't see that really being, uh, something that shakes people up. It certainly doesn't get me excited. It gets me about as excited as Stadia did. So, uh, well, I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, you're a hardcore gamer, so you have you. Sure. I, I mean, for me personally, the the Jesus. streaming box it, it doesn't. It's not going to do anything for me personally, only because I have uh, multiple. Uh, I have two Series X and a Series S. I, I don't. I don't need a new piece of hardware. Though I, I, I would say that it, it's it's <clears throat> again. This is just my opinion them offering a third way outside well technically a fourth way outside of the browser if you wanted to get become an xbox gamer and you didn't want to spend a lot of money um which is something that you know ga gaming is expensive it's it's an expensive hobby uh and uh not so much so with the xbox game pass that they, they have microsoft has figured out a way to make it very very affordable and you can still be a part of the conversation sony's traditional way of you know the full price full boat no you know st a streaming service that's only going to have very, i mean it's going to have great games but it's not going to have day and date i i don't yeah. 
again, so, so you're you're right that I'm I'm probably not the target audience for this. But then mm -hmm. my question becomes, who is? Because I don't think the casual is either. I don't think the casual understands what they would be doing with that dongle or how it would all work hmm. and getting into the ecosystem. And then there's all the technical problems. Like, yeah, do I wear a headset when I'm playing this? What what is the headset yeah. connecting to my phone? Am I doing the Xbox Live yeah, party interesting. chat? Yeah, no, they, 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 well, you know what I mean? To... Like, if I'm a casual <laughs> gamer and you're asking me to figure all that out, I'm like, bro, just sell me a box. Like, that I get, you know? Mm. And I, I think that um, it, it's just, it, it's a hard sell, as we saw with Stadia. Steam Link. Remember that they tried yeah. to do kind of the same thing, and everybody was like, "Oh, ninety nine dollars, you can have your old Steam collection." Didn't the work The difference out. there, though, Travis, is that that sta that was Stadia's main play. This is not. This is this, this is this is, an, this is an, an, an additional. Yeah. To what yeah. They I just, I just don't see it as being. It, it's sort of like the phone thing, right? Like I I don't think the phone thing, the streaming to the phone, is is like a huge game changer. Are we seeing like? casual gamers like flock to that and it's becoming the main way they're playing like I, I don't really think that that's happening and this is sort of just that on a television right uh, yeah so it's it's not that it's bad i want more options i've got 10 yeah. gigabyte internet connection i live in san francisco i probably could stream a game super well i just uh yeah, i don't that's know insane. yeah i just i just don't know where <laughs> i'm i'm I, I, who, who is gonna buy this who is this for i don't think oh, it's well, for casual. I, I, can oh, i can i hardcore. i think yeah, can i dive into that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, please, Matt, Matt, jump in. No, yeah, I, I just, I just wanted to say, finally, we've got someone on the show who echoes my opinion on divergent <laughs> business models coexisting together, at least for now, until they possibly reach a point of convergence of sorts somewhere down the line. So, well done, man in uniform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, they're, me, they're playing to their actual competitors, Amazon and Google. I think that right. that's what this whole cloud play is. It's their, they know that those are their competitors at the end of the day. But you know, yeah. Twenty years. Well, so this is where that's where it is, though, right? Because for for me. Like I'm imagining, okay, like you're you're somebody just going in there and you you know you got this TV you want to get a streaming stick, right? You, you know you're going into Target, Walmart, or whatever, and you're you're going into the streaming stick section. You're not going to the gaming section, right? And then you see the Roku, you see the Amazon Fire TV, you see the Google uh, thing, whatever it's called, Google, Chromecast Apple TV, and then you see Apple TV, then you see Xbox. You're like, okay, well, like that can do more than those other things can, right? Because <clears throat> you are familiar then at that point, like Xbox is a well-known thing with gaming. You mean I can get this and play some Xbox games as well for my kid or whatever? So I think it's another way for them to approach an audience that may not right now be that interested in gaming. The same thing with the, with the app that's going to be on the TVs, right? Like it's just going to be forward facing for them so it's a it's a way to get into another section in retail one it's another it's a way to get in front of people's faces more that aren't always looking for it right i think that's part of like the candy crush aspect of being so you're saying candy basically this well. this candy is going this is going to be a, a, something that's uh, that 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 sparks interest to the non-gamer well because if you're looking at okay like i went to buy a uh streaming stick like two weeks ago and and i went to target and i was trying to decide what's bet like what am i going to get the fire cube am i going to get the a roku am i going to get a google you know and i wanted to get one for a, in my media room because i didn't have an xbox in there anymore currently right so i was going to get something in there just in the meantime to play uh to, to play movies and stuff but the xbox stick will have all of that it'll have the netflix it'll have the hulu it'll have the amazon prime it'll have all yeah. those other things as well as you're going to get a controller option. Maybe you have two versions, one with the controller, one without, right? And then then you have the uh, cloud uh, for gaming as well, right? And then you get that. You're like, okay, you don't even need to pay a subscription for Fortnite or Apex Legends or any of the games, these free-to-play games that are going to all potentially be in there. Right now it's Fortnite. I already kicked that off, right? So it's another way of, okay, I don't even have to buy a gaming console to have my kid play Fortnite on the tv right um so then you can halo infinite make its way there as well to where you don't even have to get game pass because that Fortnite right now is free on the cloud period you don't even have to have an xbox live uh gold subscription right that you just have you just have to go to xbox.com forward slash play so with that aspect of knowing that okay that's an option you put Fortnite on the box you create a deal with epic or something like that you know you have Fortnite on there you have game pass uh 
marketing on there. Then you have uh, Am- then you have Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, all that other stuff on there, right? And then you know it's okay, ninety nine bucks for that, or ninety nine bucks for a Fire Cube, right? And at that point, it's like, wow, I'm maybe going to buy that one, and just because it has more features. And at that point, it's just a feature thing, like what's be- better value for your money. And I think it's just a way of getting more people into the ecosystem that never would have looked at it before. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely so, agree. I, I, I think the angle of the streaming stick section is exactly what we're talking about. Not so much, again, I, I don't expect someone that has a Series X to yeah. give up that Series X to play this. I, I, it, I this is not. a long play, too. To Travis's point, this is not like going to change overnight, right? This is no. a long play, right? Because mm-hmm. to, to get all that forward facing, you're going to have a long term effect from that. And I think over time, as, te- as technology gets better, the cloud gets better, and everything keeps improving. We're going to see those tides uh, shift a little bit more. But the other thing with that, though, and, I, and this is where I kind of got to agree with Tra- uh, with Travis, is that, like, then who are you selling it to? Like, I understand what you guys are saying is, oh, you know, it's going for the your more casual audience. But at the same time, your more casual audience doesn't have the Internet speed. That's the problem that we're going to run into with this. And that's kind of what my kind of point is, with it just depends on how the technology moves forward. Because cloud can improve all it wants. If the end user doesn't have the internet speed to support, <clears throat> then it doesn't matter. Because yeah, or, if you have, I'm looking, I'm looking it up right now, 15 megabytes per second to play games at 720p resolution. And that's not even considering the input delay, what kind of TV you're on. <clears throat> Like it's not you're not throwing any other factors. We're we're only thinking about what us hardcore or enthusiasts, as I like to say, are would consider it works for us. It, yeah. But I just don't think yet it mm-hmm. will be, and it is an additional option. Like Mav said, it's the perfect thing for him. He was looking for another TV, but he's also already deeply invested in the ecosystem. Mm, Whereas yeah. with the casual, it would be easier on their existing streaming stick. That's why that's another hard market to get into. The Xbox app is already going to be on there. So why do you need right. to get an Xbox specific one? So yeah, no, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's also that's, a that's double-edged, not, it's a double-edged, it's a double-edged sword edge. to assume that it's going to get people in the market who don't play video games. Because if you spend $99 on a, on the stick that is supposed to be able to play games from your TV, and then your experience is terrible, you you know don't know how to connect your headset, and you're <laughs> setting up a, a controller, and the, there's lag and input delay, and you're just like, okay, well now I'm never going to play these games again because I bought a Steam Stick and it didn't work, and, and you know that I, I feel like it, it has an equal chance of backfiring in that. It regard. does. The, the, I, I, I don't think I don't, I, don't, I don't think it will. I don't think people spend a hundred dollars without kind of looking into it a little bit first. But I'm just saying, it's like I don't know if this is how you get into gaming. It's I feel an like conversation. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. I, again, it, it only time is going to tell. We'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll see what sales look like. What people people's uh, you know hands on experience are like. We're, we're going to get all of that if the, if this comes f- to fruition, right? We we you know we've heard that it you know Microsoft hasn't announced it yet, so we we will never know until we actually see it put into actual you know hands of gamers and non gamers for that matter. I just think that a third option for uh, an yeah. industry that is very traditional, still very traditional in its, I want to play on a box, mm-hmm. is it's it's another way for Microsoft to potentially get a hold of this 3 billion gamers. And and again, I, I you know, the mobile aspect of just, just on King alone is going to be a huge play for Microsoft, which is why I think that that's, you know, we saw something like Crystal Dynamics slip through their fingers because mm-hmm. normally they would have just bought both of them and they didn't because they're really, really banking on uh, put you know this ABK deal. But listen, let's let's get the, um, Josh into the conversation. Josh, when, what what are your personal opinions on what they're calling a streaming puck? Is is there a place for this in this industry outside of just n- maybe even non gamers buying this? It w- listening to you guys talk about it, where my brain goes is that they would need they would need the software for the casual gamer. I'm just thinking the Wii, right? Like that was the, that was the system that everybody owned. Your grandmother owned that and, and had the software that was, that was accessible Yep. for to be able to play it right right now. Yeah. It's kind of in that place of who's this for my other thought is like, okay, in, in my house in particular, my daughters would probably use this thing. 
but are they going to offer a family plan for game for for Game Pass? They are. Because... That's, that's, that's they're t- going to talk about it in June. As a matter of fact, I, I believe that it's up. Uh, it's up to five people. So that becomes another option for me to go a hundred bucks. They can play Sims and the other games they're into in their in their rooms without having without having to shell out you know the entire cost of the system. But then the whole other thing is what we experienced this weekend. And when stuff goes down and you yeah. literally have nothing because you're completely tied to uh, to the Internet, there's 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 also there's also a factor there. So, I, I mean, I can see a place for it in my household, especially with my daughters, not having to get them a full console if uh, and, and I'm not I'm I've got fiber Internet. It's screaming fast. You know what I mean? So uh, it's the exception, not the rule. But I can see a place for it there. Okay. Yeah, good, good point. Uh, let, VJ, let's get your opinion on this, brother. And we'll get everyone out of here. I'll catch up on the Super Chats. And cool. we'll do outros. Uh, personally, where do you feel this 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 streaming puck <laughs> has a place? Does it have a place in this industry? Can it be um, successful, VJ? Um, I'm going to give you just... Just shoot from the hip. I don't know if this is a good opinion or not. Um, well, it's your opinion, so it, yeah. of course it's good. <laughs> it's <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just worried about embarrassing myself in public. But anyway, let's go. <laughs> if it's um, if it's possible, and the issues mentioned by the panel are surmountable, then I wouldn't be surprised if it's announced anytime from sort of here on out. Yeah, as an example of access to your content outside of California and America, for that matter, other companies and industries specifically, such as Sky and Virgin, for example, who both offer TV, internet. Uh, high-speed internet and mobile communication packages in the UK. Later this year, I believe, they are both rolling out a small external box or puck uh, and remote. So now you can travel and stay in a hotel, et cetera, and stream all your sort of subscribed content as as long as you've got an internet connection of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that's not the same for playing video games, but just just hear me out. So Mm -hmm. traditionally with these TV services, right, and you need a large exterior, you needed a, in England at least, and even in Europe, I would say, a large exterior satellite or a cable or or fiber connection, et cetera, and everything was tethered to or contingent on having a medium-sized device sitting, or or medium or large size in case of the PS5, sitting next to or under your living room TV, and ditto for obviously traditional gaming via hardware. So the UK specifically has had issues, and it still does, with allowing satellites on buildings and tower blocks, and also with incorporating operating cable and fiber and many of its sort of higgledy-piggledy road layouts that have existed for more than 500 years. So today, I think that any nation, perhaps, you know, when you look at Korea, Tokyo, uh, sorry, Japan and and Taiwan, et cetera, and Singapore even, those sorts of nations that, um, um, you know, well, it doesn't matter, right? Either a nation, a state or or a major city that has highly developed infrastructure that provides stable and consistent high quality data throughput via internet connection, fiber or wireless 5G or whatever. I'm not that techie, so forgive me. Um, then you're inevitably going to see leading content providers and perhaps gaming companies at some point take advantage of it. It's all pretty much sort of going hand in hand, as the man in black said, right, and and, um, Steel Rain said, right, as technology and infrastructure progresses and, and becomes the norm. If Xbox can provide accessibility, for this is just me now talking, and I don't really know that much about it. As I said, I'm not a technical person. I don't even know all the features that Xbox actually offers. But if Xbox can provide me accessibility to Game Pass content or even purchase content, and it's easy to use, then I'm quite excited. And more importantly, if it if it allows me access to my Xbox dashboard and apps while I travel out of town or more so abroad, then... You know, I'll be first in line because only because I've got a 75 week streak going <laughs> going at the moment, and and I worry that if I go overseas, I won't be able to access my console. But anyway, look, I apologise if that's already a thing. But anyway, you look at it, consumers. If the demographic demographic is targeted and marketed and communicated and explained to properly, some are going to be eager for it, and perhaps these devices. Uh, are, are far easy to manufacture if there is less reliance on silicone or custom silicone. Hopefully that problem will ease up as, as, as time as time goes along. And, you know, probably Boxing Bears could uh, address this far better than me. But ultimately, um, it may go well, it may go down well, you know, in key Asia Pacific territories uh, with fantastic infrastructure, yes. especially for those that don't wish to purchase a console. But, and again, look, it's just a layman's opinion. I'm sure my opinion is full of holes. But that's what we're here for, right? Just trying to help each other along to come to come to exactly. some sort of sensible, um, you know, sort of outlook on 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 how everything's going to progress for the for the gaming industry. That's me done. 
No, no. I mean, listen, this this was a great Excellent. conversation. Angles all over the place. Incredible opinions. Okay. Folks, that is going to do it for your Xbox Factor podcast on this Tuesday. Let me just catch up on some of the, some of the Super Chats. Uh, Chris R., good friend of the program, drops an outstanding $5 Super Chat and says, Joe Staten mm-hmm. said, uh, had hinted in his interview with Paris that some classic maps may be coming probably dev made on Forge. Potentially. Uh, Drawing TJ drops two $2 Super Chats. Says, Halo 2 is... Uh, had the best big team battle maps. Indeed, it did. Uh, he drops another one that says Halo 2 um, content, uh, oh, uh, the, the snow big team battle map. Yeah, I would love to see that one. I don't remember what that was called. I don't know, if, uh, but that would be dope. Sir X-Men drops an additional $5 super chat and says, boom, love my Series X. Sorry, I had to wait so long. Uh, yeah, I, f- I felt sorry. Finally, I'm glad that you finally got one, dude. Um, got two years of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate included. I paid the all access and full good for you, brother. Definitely. That that's in a program that really Xbox doesn't talk about, which is bonkers that you can get that, that package and they don't really advertise it, which is not good. A uh, pixel bit G good friend of the program. He drops a five dollars of gen says three, four, three should have prioritized the release of forge that, uh, that would have alleviated the lack of content issues. Forge release will be big when it hits. Yeah, indeed it will. Jerome TJ drops in a la- the, another super chat of five dollars. So they need to put map voting back, and they need to cut uh, put classic vehicle spawns. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I I love jumping into a scorpion tank and just wrecking shop. But oh, one more came in from King X Ladonius. Drops an outstanding uh, two dollars super chat. Says, could you imagine the rumored family plan with the puck? Yeah, I, I absolutely can. I think that's going to be huge. Uh, like Josh just pointed out, he said he can get this for his daughters and it would be, uh, you know, a monthly because he would obviously have five different accounts. He has a pretty big family. I'm I'm going to pay for my nephew uh, once the family plan comes out because he, he got his first Xbox a couple of weeks ago. But uh, listen, folks, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we had well over 350 people here. That is huge. Thank you so much for supporting this dream that I have put together along with my wife to make. Double Brow Gaming as successful as it's been so far. And this year, we've seen some great success. Let's get everyone out of here. We'll start first with uh, Steel Rain. By all means, brother, sell your brand. Tell everyone about where you and Pong Soul chatted up for three-plus hours every <laughs> Saturday. And uh, where can people reach out to you on social media? Boom. I, again, I want to thank you for uh, welcoming me on to Factor, man. Um, it's been an excellent time, a lot of excellent opinions. And again, uh, that's what makes this community so great. That's what makes gaming so great. Um, it is the different perspective, the different angles, and just having a genuine conversation um, about something that we all genuinely care about, our passion, our hobbies, uh, whatever you consider this, man. Um, and being able to take that RTS view, as I like to say, real-time strategy, um, and looking at the darker crevices of the map, uh, and pulling back our resources and really having that honest conversation. And it's such a beautiful thing. Um, with that being said, though, you can find me, Steel Rain. I, Steel Rain, I, the T is a seven everywhere. Um, you can type it in Google and you'll find me. Um, but again, if it has a search bar, definitely type that in. Hit me up in the DMs on Twitter um, or whatever the case might be. Um, let's chop it up. Let's play some games. Other than that, every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. UK time, uh, you can find me and my brother from another Pong Soul on Living Split Screen, which is a non- console centric platform again we talk about everything that's going on with the industry uh coming from different angles me and pong don't get much time during the week to really set things up and have a whole roadmap plan for what we're going to get into on a saturday uh so every week it's an amazing thing that we do have three plus hours of content that we're able to bring to the community um and people seem to be loving it man so um it's a beautiful thing come check us out um we're over 520 subs at this point on that road to 1k um i want to hit try to see about hitting 2k this year man but we'll see but with that being said ladies and gentlemen uh, chat thank you for joining with us again also thank you for being part of the conversation uh do understand there is a much bigger picture than just your personal opinion um because if that was the case we, we would have very short-sighted conversation with <laughs> Everyone's opinion matters. We don't all agree. And that's what makes these discussions even greater every time we have them. Tra- Ty Guy Travis, uh, thank you so much for being here, brother. Hopefully you had a good enough time that eventually you will come back. Uh, tell everyone about where they can find your content on IGN. Tell them where they can yes, t- yeah. tune in each week on the BitCast. And, of course, where can people reach out to you on social media? 
For sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. I don't usually, uh, usually meet with these, these types of groups. So it's cool to kind of just see what y'all are up to, uh, and talk about, talk about something really specific like uh, Xbox, but, um, yeah, you can, you can find all my content on IGN.com. Uh, last week, my review of Trek to Yomi went live, which we didn't get to talk about on the show, ran out of time, but, uh, it's, uh, a good game. If you're thinking about playing it on Game Pass, you should you should read my review. It's pretty good, yes. if I do say so myself. Um, right now, I'm working on a review of the Evil Dead game that comes oh, out nice, later this week. Dude. So, yes, um, I'll have I'll have some some stuff to say about that later this week when I can talk about it. Um, and yeah, you can you can find me on a show called Bitcast that I do with uh, Ains and Season Gaming every uh, Sunday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and then I also do a Destiny show called The Last Word on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Um, other than that, if you really hate yourself, you can follow me on Twitter at TyGuyTravis um, <laughs> if you want to hear me talk about video games and Star Wars and uh, other other nerdy things. Uh, so, yeah, that's me. Thanks again for inviting me in. Happy uh, brother, it was great to have you on, man. Definitely got to have you back for sure. Real quick, Freddie Fox in the chat drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, if this free internet the government just announced hits the right way, the Xbox Cloud Gaming could probably be huge for gamers and Microsoft. Indeed, I, I missed that. Yeah. Obviously, we're doing this, uh, uh, you know, live. So I, I'll definitely find out. That might be a conversation worth having. Even though we don't like talking about the, you know, uh, politics and government, but we do like talking about free internet, and that might be a conversation. But uh, Mav, sell your brand, brother. Tell them about the incredible shows you got going on at Spun, Fun Speculation. Where could they check that content out, potentially subscribe to your YouTube channel and reach out to you on social media? Uh, yeah, boom. Thanks again. Uh, always let me be a part of, of your great show here. Um, Thank you, sir. Xbox Factor is one of my favorite things to do every week. Uh, I hate when I have to miss it. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> but I absolutely love it when I'm here. So it's okay. Um, uh, so if you want to check out where you can find me, Twitter, Fun speculation. You can find all the updates for our channel, all the content that we got going on <clears> over there, um, where you can find it on YouTube at Fun Speculation. And you can see Mondays. We got Fun Speculation podcast where we talk about all consoles, all, all things gaming, have a blast on there. On Wednesdays, we have Fun Pop. It's Marvel, DC, uh, Star Wars, movie, TV show, Halo show. We talk all about all that fun stuff. Thursdays is PM and the PM Pong Soul. And I go deep diving on some uh, more specific topics and, and have a blast. Talk about more industry type stuff. And then Friday's Xbox Ultimate podcast on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And that's the show that started it all for us. We're about to have our 88th episode uh, this Friday. And yeah, uh, tune into that. We have a lot of fun on that show. And uh, just I love this community. Love keeping the content going and the chat. You guys rock. Travis is good talking to you, man. Uh, Steel is always great. BJ, you rock, dude. It's good to see you when you're on. When you're able to be on here, um, and yeah, have a good one. Yeah, real quick. Josh sixty four had to go to a meeting, so obviously I'll sell his brand for him. Yeah, N sixty four Josh. Find him on Twitter. He's everywhere, uh, and specifically on TikTok. He's doing a big event, so get over to N64 Josh on Twitter. Tell him Boom sent you, and definitely check out the work he's doing with TikTok because apparently it is big. But VJ, yes, th th there's not much brand to sell because you know you keep yourself <clears throat> very low key. But still, people might want to start a conversation up with you on social media and potentially find you on another podcast every now and again. Where are where can the people do that, man? Oh, I was, I was going to say to our guest, um, thank you for coming on to the show. And I'm very much to hope to see and hear from you again soon. But as long as you promise to ply the panel with sort of some uh, regal Tokyo sushi and some non-alcoholic <laughs> sake kaboom. But, uh, but jokes aside, I'm, I'm, I'm sure your review of Trek to Yumi, which I'm going to check out, is uh, hopefully it's curved, slender, slender tempered and, and sharp, just like a Japanese katana. Boom. <laughs> I really love, I really love, 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 the, love the quips. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I really love, I, I'll tell you what's underrated about you, Boom. I love how you frame and introduce each and every topic. It's it's absolutely brilliant. And, Thank you, uh, sir. And to the panel and the audience in the chat, hopefully see you all next week. 
Well, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you'll be back. We love having you on here. Your opinion is mattered, loved, and appreciated. And folks, thank you so much for tuning in to this new uh, episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And of course, I'm going to close out the show with something that's important to me, folks. Hopefully one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he said, Craig, treat others. How you want to be treated and also doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast.